Look, when you're strength training, you will not build muscle with heavyweight or lightweight if you don't understand the following. All right, what do you guys think? Ooh, we're going to talk about here. If you don't understand the following, if, if, interesting. Yeah. Uh, dude, you got me on word. Well, I'll go. start with the big one. And this one is uh, now backed by data. So hmm. we'll, uh, we'll get into like the differences between, between training lightweight and heavyweight and how you should approach each one to maximize uh, the benefits of each one. But we now have data to support um, what I think bodybuilders have communicated for a long time with heavyweight and lightweight. Uh, so what data shows is that you can build just as much muscle with lightweight as you can with heavyweight. However, mm. intensity needs to be very high mm. with lightweight. I see. So if you're doing a set of, you know, like a bench press with let's say 18 reps, it needs to be closer to failure than a set of heavyweight to six reps. So your intrinsic tension has to be like maximal. Like you have to really put like a lot of output in these lightweight reps. Yeah. So what they think the reason but why so one of the ways is like when one of my favorite ways to coach this and teach people is slowing the tempo down. Yeah. When, you, when yeah. you grab a weight, because one of the hardest parts about doing lightweight is choosing a weight that's light enough that you can move it 15 times, but it's challenging enough that at 15, I'm really yeah. struggling. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the hardest things to do. And then to do that consistently for three or four sets, the best way I've ever been able to teach that or do that with myself and clients is to, hey, no matter how light of a weight we pick, when you get to reps about 12 or mm -hmm. 13 and you realize, oh, I'm easily going to get 15, slow that tempo way down, mm -hmm. create like an isometric. Do like a pause rep there with the isometric, yes. just focus. Yes. And, ah, In other words, stay in there. such great advice. In other words, if you have a rep target of 15, let's say, make the weight fail as you get to 15. And how do you do that? Changing the tempo, changing the squeeze, making it harder. But yeah, so heavy huh. weight, uh, it, because it's heavy, probably activates more muscle fibers, sends a louder signal with lower intensity. In other words, if I did a set of five or six with the weight that I could do eight or nine reps with, it'll build more muscle than if I did 15 with the weight that I could do, let's say, 18 reps with. However, if I do 15 reps with a weight that I can only do 15 or 16 with, in other words, it's high intensity – now they seem to be equal. And this is what the data shows. The data shows lightweight builds as much muscle, but it has to be high intensity. So this is great. Hmm. I, I know, obviously, you guys are all super busy, so I don't expect you guys to be watching the series and pay attention, but it's always great when- I just read the comments now. Yeah. That's all I do. <laughs> Those are the worst. Like, oh, I'm don't do like, that. like, and don't then I just try to suck. You. You're probably up liking all <laughs> yeah, the Amazonian yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. We he does suck. <laughs> we, we just no, I, I actually was just communicating how- so I I'm, was originally, when we first started, I was doing higher reps um, and and communicating this. And then I just switched over to like uh, low reps and heavy weight. And it, as I'm going through it, I was explaining that, oh, when I choose a weight, when I'm trying to, when the adaptation is uh, strength and I want to get overall strength and I'm, and I'm training in that five, four, three rep range, uh, each set, if I can do that five, I'm not going to do seven, eight, nine reps. I'm going to put that weight down, and then I'm going to go to the, the next set. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep increasing the weight mm -hmm. until I find a weight that is heavy enough that I struggle to get five because mm -hmm. that is the adaptation. Mm -hmm. I said the opposite is true when I'm training a lightweight, lots of reps. If I grab a weight and it's like, oh, I could easily get 15, I don't necessarily go up in, in weight. I'll just slow the tempo yes. down and increase the intensity yep. because the adaptation is more muscle endurance, hypertrophy-based. And I can do that still with a lightweight by controlling tempo. So what a great, what a great way to communicate it, Adam. Yeah, because with lightweight, when you're working out with lighter weight, you really want to focus on the muscle. You want to focus on making it hard. You're trying to make, in other words, you're trying to make the lightweight feel heavy. When you're lifting with heavyweight, the focus is on the movement. If I'm bench pressing or deadlifting or squatting and my reps are five, I'm not trying to feel it in my quads or my chest or wherever. I'm trying to really brace my body. I'm trying to be tight, maximize leverage, and move the weight in the most effective, efficient way possible. In other words, I'm trying to make the heavyweight feel light. So it's the opposite. When you're working out with lightweight, make it feel heavy. When you're working out with heavyweight, yes. make it light. And again, the data shows this. The data yeah. shows that lower intensities are required with uh, heavyweight. Higher intensities are required with uh, lighter weight. Do well, it's funny results? too, like you bringing that up, because there's another benefit to that. And you've seen this with Olympic lifters, and you've seen this in like you know, Russian lifting where they'll do lightweight, but but it's really just to maximize uh, their technique oh, and yeah. to, to- Move it as fast as possible. Yeah, so now you're sharpening that um, the efficiency and you, you know, you your body's going to adapt and respond to that at a higher degree, a higher level than it would before. So it's like, 
you know, to you're not going to be able to do that because you're going to have heavier weight. You're always going to have to kind of adjust for these, mm. these little micro adjustments because your body's now, you know, sort of also being thrown out of its, its, um, you know, alignment in the movement. And so to sharpen that, but then approach it with heavier weight gradually, you're going to get even more benefit. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's true. And also, um, you know, explosive and power style training, which is a little off topic, uh, that activates a lot of muscle fibers, even though the weight is light, but it's because the force generated is maximal, right? Yeah. So, you know, if I take a medicine ball that's, you know, 15 pounds, I can lift that easily. But if I throw it as fast as I can, yeah. I'm going to activate as many muscle fibers as if I did a max lift. Um, uh, and, and it, of course, I'm and you're teaching now. good behaviors, good yeah. patterns, and good things for you to then repeat. So that way, when you have heavy weight, you're less likely to get thrown yeah. out. By the way, the reason why, if you look at our maps programs, the reason why we don't mix rep ranges in workouts for the most part is because training with heavy weight and training with lightweight is a skill. It is a feel, different mindset, and it's a different mindset. Yeah. And so, I prefer training people in a block of light weight with higher reps or a block of heavy weight with low reps because right. by the time we get to the second or third workout of that week they're starting to really understand what that feels like like I, again i'll use the example of you know a, a squat when i'm squatting and i'm trying to make a weight feel heavy for 15 reps i'm trying to make my quads fatigue i'm trying to feel the muscles that i'm targeting when i'm doing a set of five i'm not trying to feel any particular muscle sure. i'm trying to maximize yeah, it's all about leverage and technique and drive. I'm not trying to feel it in a particular area. And that's a skill and it's a practice that takes a long time to, to kind of get good at. Now, if you're really advanced, you can mix rep ranges and switch in and out. But most people are way better off practicing one for a little while, moving to the next not one. Not to mention, I've always made the yeah. point that it's also easier to measure what's being or that what's being more effective, right? right like right. so when you when you run a block where it's like, okay, this is what we're doing for the next three to four weeks. Uh, and all the exercises are in that type of a phase where we're moving in this, you know, five by five or strength type of phase. Well, and then I, then the next phase after that, I go into say muscle endurance hypertrophy where I'm moving 10 to 15 reps. I can compare the two phases for my body. It's like, oh, wow, my body really responded nicely mm -hmm. to this one. And what you'll find is there's always an individual variance. There's also a variance in what you've been doing mostly and then changing it up. That's the other thing, too. You said it the other day on the podcast really well. What did you say? You said uh, everything works until it doesn't. Yeah. Is it? yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like that you have to take that into account that we all are kind of creatures of habit and we're going to kind of gravitate to the way we like to train, the exercises we like yeah. to choose. And, okay, hopefully, those ones are uh, what give you the most gains, but at some point they won't. At some point, something else, almost anything else will give you more gains. And so being able to section it out in blocks of training where it's like, okay, this is what I'm, the adaptation I'm going after really helps you see that and go like, oh, wow, this really did benefit yeah. me to move to this hypertrophy phase because I've been training this way no, probably it's, too it's long. No, it's true. They, all the rep ranges within reason uh, build muscle. They all have uh, value. But you'll probably find, like you're saying, Adam, you'll find one that you tend to respond best to. Just don't get stuck there. That was me. Like, uh, you know, when it comes to, to muscle gains, I just respond way better to low reps. I just do. I just build. But – I could get stuck there for a while, start to feel it in my joints, uh -huh. and it stops working, and then I need to move out um, into the higher reps. So, I, I okay, I'm talking about this. I, I really wanted – I actually didn't plan to do this on air. I kind of wanted to do this off air since we're, like, uh, trying to figure me out right now. Um, I'm challenged right now with this the series I'm doing as I'm documenting all this stuff. And uh, obviously done this, you know, hundreds of times, um, but – What's unique about this is I've never come from a place uh, so far muscle wise, right? Where yeah. my body's used to having so much. And I'm noted, I noticed this last time that I did heavy squats um, that boy, it really, really bothered my hips, really, really bothered. And, you know, I've been doing my mobility and priming. I should have probably done a little bit more intensive considering that was going to be the mm -hmm. the heaviest load I'd done in a long time. I mean, it wasn't crazy. It was 275, but I was moving it in a, a block of five by fives. Um, yeah, but just four weeks earlier, it was 135. So this is what I'm thinking, yeah. right? Like um, what I wasn't accounting for and not thinking about was, man, my body was just doing 135 yep. four weeks ago and I'm already at 275. Mm -hmm. And that drastic of a, a jump, I haven't allowed all my other secondary stabilizer muscles to come up with that. And I haven't been addressing enough 
I think of multi-directional movements mm -hmm. and other things to support the piling. Cause I pile on a lot of muscle really quick. Never have I done that that quick before. Cause I've never come from a place like this before. And in, in what it's resulted in is some of these challenges that I didn't foresee coming. And I, I I'm a little frustrated right now that that happened to me because I was catching really good rhythm. I was adding, getting a lot of strength, I added a lot of muscle, but now I'm like kind of plagued with this like super tight IT TFL type yeah. stuff going on in my hips. Well, and that's you, the only thing I can, I can think of, you know, when, um, uh, you know, when they talk about how uh, muscles, um, muscles will get stronger faster than connective tissue will. Mm -hmm. And you have to be That's careful for some thinking. of that. Yeah. yeah, your muscle memory is <clears throat> allowing you to build muscle super fast. Your connective yeah, ligaments tissue, and tendons. ligaments and tendons probably take a little longer. Mm -hmm. You know, because you hadn't squatted 275. A long time. A long time. A long time. Because even before I was lifting, say, four. So I took four months off pretty much everything. Even before that, I don't even know if I was squatting 275. Right. Yep. So, it, so you got to give it, uh, you know, you have to give the connective tissue. Probably. And that's, it right, seems, that's what you felt. It seems so obvious, yeah. right? Talking it out loud with you guys now, but it just didn't feel like it. I was going through because I was just like, oh man, this is great. The strength's there. Right? Yeah. So yeah, it's the like games you can support were, it. So yes. Yeah. It kind of made sense, but yeah, it's now it's like, oh, okay, wait a minute. I don't think the rest of my <laughs> supporting cast is right. Yeah. Now. No, so, I think the, I think connective tissue takes or, and ligaments and tendons and stuff take longer to get weaker. Muscles respond faster, both directions. But once they get weaker, getting them to come back getting up. Getting them to come back, just, it takes you as long. <laughs> yeah, probably longer because yeah, there's longer. less blood flow there. Mm -hmm. There's less, you know, and you hear about this with athletes when uh, they'll, you know, let's say an athlete gets so on. So the Achilles takes so long to heal. Yes. You know? It's like it doesn't get You tear a supply. muscle, it takes a while. You tear yeah. a tendon. Oh, that could take. You know. Speaking of that, yep. my sister-in-law just did that to her Achilles. And Tore she's it? been booted. Yeah, I think she had a partial tear. I don't know if it was a full tear or not. But she's been booted up for a while now. Um, she was taking the BPC 157 and she's been religiously used. I gave her my little mini juve light and she's been doing that. Like to have her take it off like three times a day. I oh, told her like frequency. Yeah. I said frequency as much yeah. as you can of this. Every time you take that boot off, just put in the, in, in the light in, do your little movements you're supposed to do. So she had her, her first like re official like rehab and they assessed her and they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> like you're, That's you're awesome. like way ahead of schedule on recovery. And so huh. she was super pumped because Rad. I had been telling her to do all this stuff uh, ahead of time. And she was asking, is this really, what's this light doing? Is it really doing anything? I go, I know it's, it's weird. Cause you're not going to, I said, you're not going to like feel it. You're not going to do it and be like, oh yeah, this red yeah. light's doing this thing. It's like, but I said, watch. And I said, your physical therapist, you'll know by the way they respond to you. They'll tell you how quick you're, you're progressing. Her first appointment. They already said that to her. Like, out. Yeah. They were already like, whoa, you are like way ahead of schedule on recovery. So she's yeah. like, now she's all bought in. Yeah. Right? With red yeah. light, the data will show uh 15 to 20% faster. Uh, depending on the type of injury uh, recovery, BPC also probably you know look at the animal models add in, twenty that. to thirty percent faster. Yeah, you're talking about data exactly. So you're talking about like half the time. Them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so, and I would imagine the combination of the two has got to be uh, synergistic. Yep. Because BPC is literally telling everything to heal faster and move faster. Then the red light is fueling all the mitochondria of the cells trying to do that. So you just yeah. turbocharge these cells that want to repair them faster. So it's probably the I mean, it's what I, I, I wish I had all access to this when I was a trainer. Oh, I how many pro athletes? You, and, yeah, but you know what, oh though? Here's, a, here's the caveat to that is that I, this is what I did for my chest. How did it feel, by the way? You worked it well, out. I, I did. Yeah. I did. I felt good. Okay. I felt like, confident. I mean, you saw how weak it was. Yeah, I, but still. But I got really sore. Okay. Um, and But I feel good. I'm actually going to probably try and incorporate, I will incorporate it this week. I'm going to start introducing dumbbells. I won't do barbell for a while, but I will do some dumbbells and cables. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start to inter, uh, reintroduce that. But my point of bringing that up was that it's so effective that you still got to give it a little bit more time, even though yeah. you feel a hundred percent healed. Cause that's what happened to me. It was yeah. like, I was like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm back. You know, <laughs> it was like four weeks later weeks. after a yeah. pec tear. I'm like, I'm good to go oh, I'm back God, to yeah. pressing dumbbells, all heavy. And so that, and then like an idiot, you how know? long do you guys think that, um, the pro athletes have had access to this? I think stuff? they've had a long time because how many the, times the top tier ones, have, they have, have to, known. right? Because yeah. you see these athletes that are like, Oh, he had a so-and-so tear. And then like, Weeks later, he's playing again, and they don't. It's not like they're just well, jogging. I feel like I feel like they have good. If if they're a good athlete, they have agents that you yes. know have a network, and then like they have a guy. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. It's it not to. like all pro athletes. It's like BPC if you've been around for a long time, you yeah. just didn't have access to it. You had to know people. If you were, if you're worth a lot of money, if and a lot of money, people, people, will and you have the right people connected to you, that they have the connections, yeah. and they're the ones that are because not all these athletes. It's not like uh, the NFL. 
has like a peptide company and uh, no, working no, no, with no. them. They leave it's it like, to you. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's up. It's on you. It's on it's, you to do your homework. It's an interesting business, dude. It's cutthroat. I mean, and it it was. You know, I kind of had some idea of it, but until one of my friends actually made it, and then I was like watching him and, you know, go through the process of like trying to make the team. And then he, unfortunately, like preseason game, like just gets taken out, like his, his leg, his knee, oh. like blown out, ruined, like his whole career is done. Right. And so it's like, and he's just trying to make it. And, you know, there's so many athletes that like just, are trying to survive and then we'll get cut like on just a few games where they had like an off game, you know? And so it's like, it's until you're really established and you're a franchise player and you're going to make them money. That's when you start getting all these access. Yeah. To hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled understanding your mood, stress and sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. Reminded me of something I was going to bring up. I can't remember his name. Darn, darn it. He was a, he did one of the best scores. What is it when they're, when they're testing these athletes? Oh, right combine, out of combines, okay. yeah. One of the best scores ever. He looks like a, he looks like a body, but white dude. And I guess he had the fastest 40. He did all four, one, uh, six, I believe. What who was who his ran name? a four, one, six. Four, one, what was his name? Six. It was a big white dude. Uh, and they said that, Kula just posted about it. And every, I asked him. That. They were Hold talking on. about. Well, I don't know if it was this. I don't know if it was recent. Maybe it was. Yeah, maybe four it was, there one was a six. Oh, okay, this was a recent. Yeah. Bro, you'll go back in time running that fast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's fast. He bro. said, <laughs> "There's there." Okay, so I asked him, "Like, is that the fastest? That's the fastest I've ever heard." That's you know, because I was like, "That unbelievable." He said, "Christian Coleman at four one two. Wow. Wow. I don't even know who that is. I don't either. And I was like, <laughs> my mind was just blown because it was. Uh, I, I've seen a four three in person. I didn't believe it because I was like, "Oh my god, that guy was what does it lightning look like? fast." Yeah. You know? No, there was one guy. I can't remember his name. He was a big white dude, looked like a bodybuilder, and everybody thought he was gonna crush the NFL. But and then he tanked apparently. And they said that he 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 gained like thirty pounds of muscle going into this, and they were all speculating how many drugs he was on. Oh. And then he just I can't remember his name. Off the, off the, yeah, it'll, wonder, it'll pop. But he looks, there's like a scary picture of this dude running. <laughs> he looks like a pro bodybuilder running. Like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're not talking about um, uh, Cushing's, are you? Uh, no. What? It might have happened in the 90s. Oh, okay. uh, or early two thousands uh, back then, but I didn't know somebody ran that Brian four. Bosworth. Maybe uh, no. I don't know. Anyway, that's the only white guy name I know. Drop right yeah, look there. at that. Doug Doug knows yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, look at this guy. Oh, come on, the sports world. Speaking, yeah. in. speaking of gains, hmm. I, I was going to bring this up on the last podcast. Totally forgot. So, do you guys remember that gentleman we had on the show? Who he had? Uh, he had to, he had testicular cancer, I think, or he, he some kind of. I think it was testicular cancer. And had zero testosterone because they had to block his testosterone for a while. And he was trying to make gains. And we were trying to talk him through. Oh, a live a live Yes, caller? live caller. Okay. Do you yeah, guys remember him? I vaguely remember. Okay. Yeah. So he followed our advice. So remember, we're working with somebody who had uh, no testosterone. And he's not allowed to raise his testosterone just yet. He just got out of cancer treatment. Hmm. Um, and he's training, working out. And he's like, is it possible to make gains? And so we gave him some advice. Well, this six weeks later, he's here's a follow-up. In six weeks, he gained nine pounds of muscle and lost nine pounds of body fat. Wow. With no testosterone, almost what? no testosterone. Wow. Right? And uh, he's following. he was following MAPS Anabolic, and we gave him advice with his diet, keep his protein high, reverse diet. That's impressive. Isn't that great? Wow. Man. Brad Jones. Put the work in. Wow. Brad Jones was Good his job, name. That's, Brad. Really, that's really Isn't impressive. Isn't that amazing? That's, that's awesome, crazy. Dude. Yeah. And so when he, gets, when he gets out of this stage of when he can start to get his testosterone back to normal, um, I mean, his gains are going to blow up. Wow. But I, you know, I wanted to share that because. For sure. You can still, even if hormones are not doing great, your body will still adapt. Uh, obviously, not to the potential that it could. Yeah. But you can still get. You can they'll, still they'll adjust muscle. based on the signal you keep uh, reiterating and showing. Yes, yeah. dude. But yeah. I was so happy to hear that. What was the time frame he was able to do that? Six in? weeks. Wow, that's mm -hmm. really impressive. Yes, <laughs> it reminds me of all the. YouTube comments I'm getting right now because of the the muscle and, and 18 pounds in a in a month. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. The amount so of much you, controversy. The of irony that. of that was the amount that we prefaced it and mm -hmm. like told people and like documented. Do, yeah, this is what's probably going to happen. I didn't like overly communicate it because I also didn't want to like fuck with myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be like, <laughs> I'm going to go do this. Deep down inside, like we knew, we yeah. talked off air a lot. Like, yeah. you know, what- The this, potential was pretty high. Yeah, I knew the potential was high. I But what I, I didn't want to talk too much because I'd never come from that place before. Mm, not yeah. that far mm. off. Like I've, I've lost muscle then came back, but not that, that much gone to come back from. And so I knew the potential was high and I knew that I wasn't training. And I know you talked, we talked a little bit about 
the the Casey Vider stat, uh, and, yeah. and people were speculating, saying that was bullshit. No, this the, and that. The, the Colorado experiment. Yeah, the Colorado. You know, experiment. it's weird that I, I get why people debate it because the, the the results that Casey Vider got were so insane. It, it it's it's yeah, it's, it's hard to comprehend. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But uh, if it was done at the I forgot what university it was done. Um, at University of Colorado, maybe it was done at the university. It was supervised by the professors who run the exercise and physiology departments there. It was a legit study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's so they documented it. So so you can't argue that that didn't happen. I, I, now I, how it happened, we can debate. But Casey Vider himself said, first of all, well regarded as one of the best genetically gifted bodybuilders of all time. He was Mr. I think Universe at 18, back when Mr. Universe was a big deal. Wow. Like just built, he was just super genetically gifted. He went on a 900 calorie diet going into it, lost all his muscle, then went into it, bumped his calories, and then worked out with Arthur Jones. I, did high I mean, it's not that weird to me at all, especially seeing what I was able to do with, I definitely don't have bodybuilding genetics. You don't have his genetics. You know. I definitely do not have, it de definitely not on his level. You could, some people would try and argue and say, I have good genetics. Okay. But okay, I'll take that. Yeah, but, but you uh, wouldn't win Mr. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And definitely not like a natural whatsoever. So, and then, you know, he also, I know, so he intentionally did that. I kind of did with GLP one. It wasn't yeah. like I was like yeah. really trying to, lose. I just allowed it to happen. So similar type of situation where the GLP one yeah. probably lost a good 20 pounds of muscle or maybe 15 pounds of muscle on me right before my calories were extremely low. And then I came off, ramped it up. Mm -hmm. About the only thing that he has, in, well, in addition to the genetics and stuff like that, he probably also, if I could imagine if I was allowed all the anabolics I wanted, yeah, like yeah. I probably would have taken some stuff for recovery that would probably yep. speed that up, maybe growth hormones, some other things that would have like accelerated that process. So I, I'm on basic TRT stuff. So, yeah. I mean, and if I was able to do that, uh, in that short period of time, it's not unbelievable well, you, to I me. I mean, for him we've to do seen that. a lot of examples of like extreme body manipulation, and like I mean, even if you look at like somebody like Christian Bale going into the Machinist, yeah. you know, and like getting to the point where like I literally dead man walking, like looked like yeah. he was like just bone, and then to be able to bring himself back from that within I don't even I bet you it was like a few months, yeah. you just, know, where when he, you he, lose muscle, especially if you lose muscle that you've had on your body for a long time, getting it back happens so fast. So if you, yeah. if you go and target, it's where you you're, it's like you, where your body wants to be. It's you're a just crisp, taking it. There. It's just crazy. wait, just wait until, okay. So here's another one. I'm going to call it on the show now. So people know ahead of time, but it, this will cause even more controversy. I will do this towards the end of this like three month journey, right? This, so in another month or so, when I feel like I've put on an even more muscle by that time, I will do a 24 hour transformation that everybody oh, will show yeah. up. I will intentionally Here, here's the tricks. Yes. Yeah. I will intentionally yeah, the deplete tricks. the day before real hard, low calorie, low amount of water, suck everything on me. First thing in the morning, take a picture of myself yeah. just deflated and at a weight. And then I will load all day, get a full body training pump and then take a picture and show people a <laughs> A hey, 24, 24 hours. 24 hours. I put on 15 pounds and look like this and That'd watch awesome, everybody's dude. heads explode oh, and all the liar. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, but I'm going to do it. And, and you're going to do the pictures holding the newspaper. That's like the ultimate yeah. troll bait right yeah. there. Yeah. I, it's, I've done it already. So uh, I know, and I definitely haven't done it with this much of an extreme difference in my body. So I know what it, my body's capable mm -hmm. of. When I was competing every night, I fluctuated nine pounds, not trying to fluctuate. Yeah. This just. Damn. Eating and just normal, what nine pounds yeah, every when you night. Have, when you have a lot of muscle on your body, I mean, there's there's fluid and glycogen comes in and out. It's easy to flush. Yes, that much. especially when you've got that your metabolism is ramping. You know that's like Bro. right now because your metabolism. So how quickly you your Bro, body I, I uses. Seven, I gained seven pounds in Florida. In Florida, you seven pounds. Seven, yeah, seven wow. pounds. Why? Now, is that, did I gain seven pounds just of muscle? No. Of, yeah. It did was. You, and just, you didn't gain seven pounds of fat either. No, it was just sodium. It's yeah, sodium. Yeah. It's air. You know, airplane food. It's you know, it's the food eating out. You know, our schedules are off or whatever. Seven pounds of ain't muscle. Uh, uh, know, just seven know. pounds of squish. <laughs> Puffiness. <laughs> nice or mushiness. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Huggable. Yo, speaking of which, I want to bring this up because uh, we keep getting messages about this from trainers. And I think it's a good topic uh, to cover for coaches and trainers. And that is, you know, there's a belief that in order to be a successful trainer or coach, you have to appear to be like ripped or super fit or whatever. But on the flip side, um, then we have people who say, okay, I want to be a trainer. I think I'll be successful. But they're clearly 
don't exemplify health or fitness right, right. or they're just kind of really out of shape or There's whatever. a balance there. They're definitely, yeah. we have a friend of ours like that. He, he tries it. What's his name? Steve. He tries to, tr he wants to coach people, but he yeah. obviously yeah, doesn't yeah. reflect yeah, you know, yeah. fitness. And that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. But when it comes to training people, you, you, you want to look like you take care of yourself, but you don't need to be ripped. No, not at all. No, I think you want to, you want to look healthy and look like you take care of your, your health, your body. You live by the things that you're trying to teach everybody. I think that there's a, I also think there's a, an extreme, the other direction, like somebody who is jacked 24 seven all the time, doesn't necessarily exemplify health. A lot of times those people are doing a lot of things extreme to get that look and appeal that way. It's just unfortunate because the average consumer, I don't think understands that. I think they think, oh, this person's a trainer. They need to be, I want to, I want my trainer to be super no. jacked. Most successful trainers I had ever worked for me were just fit. Yeah. They yeah. weren't shredded. The shredded, I think they didn't do well, to be honest with you, because they were too focused on themselves. You know what do it is? Do they have like marketing data on that now in terms of like how uh, people respond more towards like a super shredded jack person to do the initial purchase versus like somebody that's maybe like a little more approachable. Like I feel like it's shifted the market. It, well, it's also, I, you know, I don't even know if it's changed per se as much as it is just the perception that we have. Okay. So the, the loudest and most annoying people on YouTube on, on fitness channels oh, yeah. are fitness, other fitness fanatics. Yeah. yeah. So the people that are talking shit to me about my physique, wherever it's at or with that, yeah. like sure, that's not, of course, those aren't my clients. No. <laughs> those yeah, are the people like, I've never had a client talk shit about my body. I never <laughs> once, no matter in the worst shape I've ever been as a trainer, like I never once had a, a, a client who it's hired it's me. It's the opposite of the way they're doing it. Yeah, and, yeah. and they, so- They so, get offended by it. And this is the mistake that a lot of fitness people make is they allow that noise from other fitness peers to dictate how they build their business when really that's not your client. Right. Your client is Susie who is a stay at home mom with three kids and has about 20, 30 pounds that she needs to lose and is struggling to be consistent with her diet and does not want to be jacked. And is like, she doesn't need, you know, steroided out freaking six pack ab Adam to mm -hmm. like, get her healthy and she doesn't even want <laughs> it might that. even be intimidating yeah yeah so it's like we but we allow these this loud minority that comments on social media and stuff like that to steer oh i need to look this way no. so i can impress what these fitness you kids know, what you don't want what you don't want it's gonna is, be authentic yes and what you don't want is to give off you know on the other on the other side right is you don't want to give off the impression that you don't practice what you preach. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's exactly. right. That's that's basically that's it. the balance. That's the balance. Like, and it makes sense. Look, if you if you your body wanna, will reflect that. Listen, I'm not taking cook. financial advice from somebody who's broke. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the, or imagine a dentist, a dentist, dentist. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna charge you uh, fifty grand a year. I'm gonna help you with your business. Oh, great. How are you doing? Like, yeah. oh, I'm struggling. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not a that's probably not a good idea. Your house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it, exactly. Like, you 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 don't want to though give off the the you know like the example I gave earlier. You don't want to give the the impression that you don't care about your fitness because then you just seem like a, a hypocrite or like you don't really have a passion for it. But again, the shredded that probably does more it intimidates people more than it does. Now I, I think social media has changed the perception because so many people use their body to sell themselves. Yeah. But that's also a terrible way to build a business as a trainer or a coach. Well yeah then you also too you you attach yourself to that. And I, I've watched this firsthand with a lot of our fitness friends that have built their business around exactly what their body looks like. And then there's this like pressure yeah. of, oh my God, what happens when I'm in a season of my life? It's or the least valuable thing coaches and trainers can even focus on. It's uh -huh. like, dude, solve their pain and dysfunction. You know, yeah. like you have those tools in your toolbox and then that is going to spread and, and keep and retain clients more than anything else you're doing. That's totally. such a, that's such a good point. Good I mean, point. we've talked about this before. Like, I mean, I remember when I'm so mad that it took me as long as I did to get my NASM CES, like, that certification probably came at year, I want to say six. I should go back and look and see exactly when it was. But that's it, the most valuable cert I ever got. Oh, it, it like it was it was a total aha moment after I got it and realized how much of that I, knowledge I applied to my clients and how how much more valuable I became as a coach and a trainer. It's correctional exercise. Yeah. Like you, you, when you, people the trainers think, get people to lose weight, get people to build muscle. That's my value. That's some of your value. Correctional exercise, straight up, may mm -hmm. be more valuable than any of that. Yeah. By Being far. able to solve people's pain. It translates, uh, it's a downstream effect to every other pursuit. Every other goal they have, it all relates to that. You start there, that's the core of it. Yep. And then everything else works so much better. Yeah, and most, more, I got more sales, more clients. I kept more clients. 
because I can solve pain than weight loss. Or well, and pain. and you've talked yeah. about this before. It's it's the thing that you can like do in a session. One session. Like you can't. I don't care how good of a trainer you are. You can be the best bodybuilding coach, the most knowledgeable nutritionist. You can't show somebody weight loss and weight gain in a in a visit. No, it's impossible. But you can absolutely alleviate or help somebody with chronic pain in one session. Yeah, you show someone in the beginning whose back hurts 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes later with correctional exercise. Oh, my back doesn't hurt nearly as much. Yes. Boom. Value. Huge. Yeah. And 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 mo again, going off back of to not listening to all the noise of the fitness peers and realizing that the average consumer they care more about alleviating chronic pain than they care about having yep. six packs. Yep. That's just a fact. Like now, that's most people. This, the mm -hmm. other cert that I think is more value, that's that has more value now than ever. So I think correctional exercise for sure. If yeah. I had to list my top most valuable in terms of what I was able to bring my clients and, I, and how I was able to build my business, it would be the correctional exercise one. But close now, I think, are the nutrition certifications because of online coaching. Hmm. Yeah. Like the value of online coaching, so much of it is more of it is on nutrition. Yeah, you're right. Than in person, mm -hmm. you know, in person, more of the value is in like exercise and technique. And, you know, when you're doing online, like a lot of it is diet. A lot of it is nutrition. So now those certs, I think. are Well, more yeah. When you talk about what moves the needle for an online coach, it is the nutrition. Because you're, let's, if they're virtual, they're taking cues from a video anyways, whether yeah. it's a video of you or something they found on YouTube. Yeah. So they're having to basically teach themselves versus nutrition they're gonna you can tell them like hey i want you to cut this out of your diet add this to your diet and your ability to be able to look and assess at a diet to be able to get to the root cause of why somebody is or isn't seeing results is so valuable yeah. so so they're valuable. doing it for they're giving nasm by the way is giving the nutrition cert for free with the regular cert for oh, free yeah so cool. you get the right you get the cpt they're going to give you the nutrition oh one what, is that an for offer free. for us that's is an it? offer right now for oh, uh, that's uh, great. oh that's sick do they have to do anything special for that is it just no you get the cpt they go through our link and then you get the nutrition one. Oh wow yeah which is nice. good that's one of the more like i, I think for online coaching again that's because you know i did we all did nutrition but we all train most of our clients for most of our career in person uh-huh and most of the value I brought well, people had to do with exercise. Yeah, and you could kind of discuss those things mid-session. Yeah. So you kind of had that uh, availability. But yeah, it definitely, to be able to uh, move the needle at all, like talking about that online is yeah. a lot more Speaking effective. Speaking of moving the needle, we were in Florida, right, for the Cabral um, event, uh, which was great. Reimagining Health Summit. Mm -hmm. That was good. good. Good time. I met some really interesting. I met a, uh, an oncologist uh, at the dinner who treats cancer. I'm going to try, I might try and get him on the show. Really, really, Sweet. really smart guy, brilliant guy. But, uh, my, the thing I was going to bring up was the, the gripper thing. I, I had to make sure to bring that up on the podcast. <laughs> ah, of course. Of course. We, we all like moved way beyond that. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, where's your gripper? Like yeah. it was like hiding and he made sure they wouldn't go gone. Well, Dr. Cabral had told him. I asked him too. I said, the the yeah, he asked him the record. Dude, and this Sal is my strength. to go prove that he can do it better than anybody. And I think you did. I think you beat it, right? I did. Yeah. I think you beat whoever the and like, you know, did you make sure to like, tell him yet? Because I don't know if he knows. I told him, and he's like, "No way!" I'm like, "You yeah, told well, him your, right away." Well, oh, ask your people, dude. So <laughs> I did. So That's we great. left, and I'm like, "Where's the gripper test?" <laughs> oh, it's I so was great. Like, oh man, I it's can't the talk one shit because it is. Yeah, okay. no, you're strong with that for sure, dude. That's like, it. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. the one thing I got. It's crazy. I'm next to Mister. I can do any sport, and then you know, college athlete, pro, and they never. We're hella competitive. Never aging, Doug. So whenever a circus game shows up, I make sure to play it so I can do something. You own it, bro. Uh, I missed out on that the, dinner. I was out. I was uh, went met up with Katrina that night. So, oh, how so, was Disney yeah. World? The, the Halloween thing. Right? So it was cool. It was really cool. So that was. Uh, so I would have never taken Max to Disney World at this point in his age. I just think that one. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys remember much before age five? Like, I think age five is kind of when you start to remember things, right? No. So first if of I all, see pictures. I'm like, oh, I kind of remember. Yeah. Okay. Place. So I, I really feel it. like. Five up is when you start to have memories yeah. of most people. I mean, I know there's uh, some anomalies of people. Like, I remember four or three, some yeah. random kid remember some weird shit like that. But most people, it's like five and above. Or if you're Howard, what's his name? Oh, he remembers being born. Yeah, I was like, yeah. get oh, the fuck out of here. I would not want to remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, it's my mom. So, <laughs> so anyway, so the fact that he's, uh, you know, he's barely five. So I already uh, normally wouldn't have brought him to do that. Yeah. Two, my son is terrified of rides. So it's like, okay, why we do that? Well, he is obsessed with Halloween. Absolutely obsessed. And it was Katrina who was just like, hey, uh, Disney World puts on this thing called Not So Scary, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween, mm. which is like so up his alley because he loves Halloween, but he also doesn't want to be super freaked out either. Yeah. So he's not like haunted house. I can go do that he's stuff. Still a kid. But he like, yeah. yeah. So he likes, he likes Halloween stuff. And so- 
for that, it was awesome. They And I would say the best experience for me going there with him was the lights, the parade, and the shows was what was so incredible. Was he into it? Yeah, so much into it. Like he, uh, awesome. yeah, he's now his one of his characters now is um, Oogie Boogie from yeah, uh, yeah, from Nightmare, uh, the yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, he yeah, loves yeah. that. And, and you know what? That's kind of creepy yeah. when you watch that. It's yeah. it's like borderline. Yeah, yeah, yeah it can yeah. be a little scary. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's obsessed is he like with the, the potato sack looking yes. ghost. Guy? Yes, remember oh, okay. they, they tear him open and spiders come out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Which traps, is, so what was kind of cool that this the way this all happened so the week before uh and i think i shared this on the podcast where i took max for the day and we went and did the um uh the slime we made slime, oh, the, so slime place, yeah. the other thing we did was so we we went and did slime and then we were gonna i was gonna take him to get frozen yogurt and we walked by this store the the stuff a bear store whatever it's called you know build a bear build, build a bear, bear. thank you doug <laughs> doug knew right away stuff him. he's built another place, doug has built <laughs> doug's built a few bears i have actually don't yeah. go to the stuff a bear everybody yeah. <laughs> that's an Stop adult store. In the back <laughs> <laughs> so so we go in that store and uh no he he of course he wants he's like is there any ha halloween stuff and then there's like three or four characters one of them is oogie boogie and he really wants to get it. And I'm like, oh, no, let's go. We're gonna, let's get out of here. We're going to go get yogurt with that. And he's just, Daddy, Daddy, I really want to. I said, okay, here's the deal. I said, if you, I'll get you that, but then no yogurt. It's one or the other. So I had to make, I made him choose, you know, which one he's like, okay, no yogurt. So he said no to yogurt, which I'm like, okay, I'd rather get you a toy anyways over, over ice cream anyway. So I went back. And I got him Oogie Boogies. That was his first experience with them. They put like a, you could put like a heart and you could put music so oh, he yeah, talks yeah, and everything. Yeah. So it played his song. That was just, a week or two ago. Oh, now he gets to go see. So he got obsessed with him, and the, you know how kids are. Right? Once they find something like that, then he gets all obsessed. Watch all the videos. Yes, watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went down the yeah. rabbit hole. We're still, you know, I'm listening to it on repeat, fucking oh, yeah. four times a day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. like, so it's like we got that now, and then we go to Disneyland, and one of the main shows was kind of centered around his character. Oh, so he must. Have oh, he went so oh, crazy, dude. He went. There's a there's a cool picture. I don't know if you guys saw it. I post. I actually posted it um, on my on my IG and his where uh, you can see both our faces are by each other and we're looking up. I it's, saw it. So that's, we're watching that oh, right at that moment. Uh, and okay. Katrina caught it. Thank God, because she never takes her camera out. I'm always giving her a hard time. Like, you know. <laughs> she got one. Yeah, she did. I was like, you finally caught, like my son and I have all these great moments that I feel like I don't have that I haven't been able to because my wife is not the camera person whatsoever. I'm the camera person. And so she pulled that out. She got it. I was so happy she did because he was so into that show. It was uh, Hocus Pocus. And you can actually watch it on YouTube. It's, it's some and some people have videoed like like high def video, so you could literally experience very similar to what I experienced live on YouTube. And yeah, it's a, like a, I don't know, like a twenty minute show. And there's a whole scene where he comes out and he plays yeah. that song and he knows all the words oh, and he's just like, it so. was great seeing him. Man. I love that kid. Yeah. I was playing with. I was, there's a game I play with my son where. I'll, I'll pretend to eat him. I'll call him my sandwich. And then yeah. he talks. I'm like, my sandwich is talking. I was playing that with Matt. Oh, yeah. He was dying, bro. Isn't he? He's he was so, cracking up. He's so good, bro, to travel with. He's like, just, I you know, feel it made like, me miss my kids because yeah. I saw your boy start playing with him. I'm like, oh, I want to play with him. Oh, yeah. he's such, he's he like, a, I feel like he's like a little adult. Well, you take him, like, I don't, yeah. I don't mind. I bring him to dinners when I have other adults. He, was chill. he just hangs out. Yeah. He just hangs out and he does his thing yeah. and he's, he's, he's not loud. He's not obnoxious. Yeah. He's not breaking things. Loving, happy little, little, yeah. Boy just he's so fun to you know i always wondered that like when i was in my 20s and uh you know long before i thought i was gonna have a kid or not you know one of the things i always i thought about this like oh man you know i feel like i'm gonna be i'll have a business or a job where i have to travel a lot and do things and you know what am i gonna do with a kid like i won't be able to have a kid kids are so difficult to take places and do this i always had that perception in my head i would have never imagined i would have had this kid that Nine times out of ten, if I have the option to bring him or leave him with family, I'll take him because he's this like he's not a hassle. He's no, so he's not, he's not hard to manage. No, no, no. he's so speaking, chill. Dude. You know, speaking to what you said about uh, taking your kids somewhere and they don't remember it. You know, it's it's funny you said that. I was actually reading an article on that, um, and it was it was a different topic, but it kind of harkens to that. Because I used to think that too. Like, right, why would I take my kid to this place? He's only two or three. He's not going to remember it. They do. They don't remember it in the way that we do, right. where we talk about it, but but those experiences definitely shape their attachment to their parents. It shapes their central nervous system mm. and their brain. Mm. So it's not the same memory like, you know, like, oh, I remember we went on that ride. They're not going to be able to do that, but their body remembers it. So sure. those experiences are all positive. So that's a good point. Because, I mean, that, that and that was Katrina was like, I think that he, especially since he has an attachment to a character, 
to have an attachment to a character like that, to see the character yeah. in real person, that excitement, that joy, like that will stay with him somewhere or another, whether he visually remembers or can recall, but that feeling, I'm sure he'll, he'll feel that. I had sure. a well, Ethan had a pretty memorable weekend. Dude, uh, I saw the photos. Yeah. They look fake. They were so sick. It was unbelievable. I can't like, it was homecoming. I can't describe it without being fruity. It was one of the, like, it was what? one of the most, <laughs> it was one of the most beautiful like, sunset. Oh my God. Sunset like, pictures I've ever so seen. Epic, dude. Like, yeah, it, it was kind of funny. Cause it was like, I, I'm like, buddy, like you better take this in. It's not going to be this good. Like for your prom, I guarantee you. <laughs> Justin's like, he peaked his freshman yeah, year. Yeah, he peaked, bro. <laughs> like he, I mean, he, he just started kind of dating this girl and, and like asked her to this uh, homecoming. And so, you know, we went to her house and met her parents and the nice people. And mm. it was, it wasn't awkward. I was like, Oh, thank God. You know, who knows like yeah, how dude. this is going to go down. <laughs> uh, and I borrowed my dad's car. And so we got to kind of, I drove them to, to the event and it was great. I had this moment. It was pretty, I was like cracking myself up because, um, I'm driving and you know, they're in the backseat. I remember this was the same car that I got to borrow for my prom. Oh, wow. with my girlfriend, I was in the backseat, you know, That's where wild. he is. And then I look up in the, the rear view mirror. I have a mustache. And my dad, dad had a mustache. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I just turned into my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I like told them that and they didn't get, you know, they're like, what, what are you talking about? But I, Sorry, just, my dad I had a mo I'm like, I'm having a moment right now. You know, like this is trippy. Oh, dude, dude uh, I have, I have a good, uh, Justin mustache story for you guys that happened. <laughs> so we were, uh, you, you got, were, oh, you and Doug went and had, um, breakfast at the, when we were at the pool. So we stayed oh, at yeah. this, uh, we stayed at a very cool hotel, actually. Dr. Cabral's place where it was right up the road from Disney World. Very, very family oriented. Like the pool was sick, huge, like three, four pools, water slide, big rock waterfall stuff, tons of kids and families and stuff like that. Real cool place. And, uh, me, Justin and Katrina and Max all went to the pool while, I, uh, Doug and Sal went to breakfast. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting Max already and we're, we're getting our suntan lotion on and stuff like that. And Justin goes to the, goes in the pool. And before I even get ready and get back to the pool, like Justin comes walking back and I'm like, Oh, is it too cold or what, what, what's up? And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, my, my time expired. I'm like, what do you mean your, your time expired? He goes, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can, uh, can only linger around a kid's pool with a mustache by yourself as a guy <laughs> for so long. <laughs> Because you're by yourself. Yeah, yeah, like he's all, he's yeah like, dude. He's like, yeah, with this mustache and by myself as a guy in a kid's pool, he's like, you can only- like, hey, I'm very self-aware. Yeah, like, I was, like, I was like, like, that was very self-aware, dude. I was like, like that well, was- because Just sitting there, just kind of, you know, <laughs> like, wait, I shouldn't be here. Like, I gotta <laughs> move on. It's because you're a dad. Like, if your kids were in the yeah. pool and some random dude was yeah. just chilling yeah, in the kid's probably, pool, yeah, yeah. after about five minutes, it's like, what are you doing here, bro? It bro. It didn't even dawn on me until he said that, and I'm like, I guess that's a really, that's a really self-aware good point there. Because yeah, who's the mustache guy in the yeah, pool by himself? With I no, didn't want to be that with guy. no kid. That's hilarious, bro. I know yeah. they started laughing. You ever see? I mean, it's true. If you're at a theme park <laughs> yeah. or something, and there's like a random man by himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like what are you doing? I know. Yeah, you doing? I felt like I was like, you could borrow Max for a little bit if you yeah, want to go back. Yeah, if I had pool. Max with me, it would have probably been a little different. Oh, of course, least, of yeah. course. Yeah, it makes what, total sense. When my he's old, an uncle. When yeah. my oldest was a little one, his uncles realized that if they took him out, they get way more girls' phone numbers. Did I ever tell you guys about this? Oh, when my oldest was. He's 19 now, but when he was real little, they'd be like, "Hey, can we take Ultimate him? Wingman. Can we take him for a yeah. walk to the park?" I'm like, "Oh, this is it's nice, like having a nice puppy, uncles, dude. right?" After yeah. two or three of these, yeah. I was like, "What? Do you, what's going on?" They're like, "Do girls talk to us like crazy? That's right. like, can we borrow him again?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get this cute little <laughs> having a kid or a puppy. Those are like the, that's the move when you're a kid yeah. like and that. You know, and then they'll tell, "Oh no, he's just our nephew." Oh, you're so yeah, good yeah. with kids. <laughs> <laughs> can we borrow him all the time? Oh, sure, no, dude. no, you, you can't do that. <laughs> hey, sorry to interrupt. Are you struggling to get a flat midsection, a flat tummy? We have a free flat tummy guide. In there, we give you strategies, techniques, exercises, nutrition tips on how to get a flat tummy. You can get it right now. It's totally free by clicking on the link in the description below. What happened with you? You, you had a note about Max doing something the stairs. Oh, bro. Oh, my God. He fell down the stairs. Oh. He fell down the stairs. Oh, wait. You told. Okay. Yeah. He's okay. Uh, yeah. I know. I mentioned to you guys That's off right. air about it, but. I, you know, it's, it's, uh, you've brought this up before. In fact, it was your stair story where you talk about you almost ripped the rail off. It is wild. Um, I mean, I, and I don't want more of them, but it is a trip. It's almost an out of body experience when you have a scary moment with your kid like that. Yeah. Like the, oh, yeah. The, when I, when I replayed it afterwards, it was almost like everything was in slow motion, but I was all the way on the couch. Katrina, uh, uh, Katrina's mom was over at our house and she had just came over. We just got back. And uh, they were coming down our stairs 
and I hear her mom scream, and Katrina was right by the stairs too. And then I I hear Katrina yell, and I hear him. I hear the tumbling, and I'm all the way in my living room. My living room all the way to the stairs. I don't know how many. That's probably a good 20, 30 feet away, or what do I thought? Um, but I was there, like with the, before he could get tumble down the stairs. I was already like reaching to go catch him with Katrina. And I was like, how the hell did I get there? And I did feel like my groin felt like I pulled it. Yeah. So that, but your ability when that happens, it's wild. Well, because you heard the scream, you yeah. heard the, the bumping. Yeah. So you're for sure like, yeah, it's like you don't even think anymore. It's yeah, just instantly you're going man. that, yeah, yeah, going that way. And yeah. it's like, I wish there was like video of like how I moved to do that. Yeah. Cause I don't even know how I got from there to there well, in that short like a, a lot of dads have that story, right? I, I think so too. I've, I've heard that from other people too. who have had moments like there. You hear those crazy stories where the mom yeah. picks the, picks the car up for the kid. Yeah, yeah. It's a trip. You what jump you're, you're capable of doing in a moment of like how much fear yeah. is a, is a motivator like that. Yeah, Jessica has that turned on all the time. <laughs> all, the time, all the time like it, like, it, like it doesn't like they'll fall they'll cry whatever right uh, a little bit or whatever and she's like boom she's there zing. and then she's like why aren't you moving and i'm like well i don't it didn't sound like because it has to there, there's a certain kind of scream oh yeah and a certain kind of fall that if i see that like the other day i was playing with my kids uh in fact i didn't even tell my wife we were playing and my daughter was running on the couch and she looked like she was falling backwards off the couch and you better believe i reached with like lightning speed and grabbed her yeah real yeah. quick but you know regular falls and stuff but yeah, yeah my wife any fall She'll be across the house, and you'll see her fly through the house. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like there is different uh, screams and cries as yes. the kids have. Yep. And there's definitely- And there's also different noises in the house. Breathing and- Like yeah, every yeah. noise in the house doesn't get me to run down the stairs. But some of them, if it sounds like someone's in the house, yeah. or yeah. there's a certain kind of sound, then, yeah. I'm, then I'm there. Yeah. Usually I'm like, eh, it's- yeah, Something there's there's definitely closet. like a different type of a, a cry that he can do oh, that will like really really get me going versus ones where I'm just like oh yeah he's he's frustrated or he wants mm -hmm. like oh, I'll mosey on over there versus where there's ones where and that was like you could hear the fear in his cry as he was tumbling down the stairs and you could hear but he just scream. fell on his butt it wasn't yeah thing. like luckily what happened was so I did I tell you guys this that he said like. Uh, We've we've had the massage table out because Katrina's been massaging me. So like his new thing is now uh, is getting a massage. So like you know after he gets out, yeah after he gets out of the bath <laughs> yeah so he's this like so he, he tells wow. Katrina and I I want a massage can I get a massage and so he, so, so Katrina I mean he's got he's a kid right so he has no patience so he can sit there for like, it's like a three minute massage yeah, yeah, right yeah. but he's hilarious because he's obviously watched his mom massage me and he hears me yeah, and some yeah. of that. So he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. No, he doesn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. He makes the noise. Yeah, yeah, oh, right there. And I'm like barely, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, right there, dad. It's like, oh my God. Shut dude. up. Shut up. You're he's too got attention. Oh, you dude. You got attention. Yeah, dude, get out of here, <laughs> yeah. bro. You're hilarious. So stressed. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that's so yeah. Crazy. No, he's been uh, he's been getting his massages. I don't know why I was telling you that, but it's oh, like his, oh, but his new thing is to to get a massage from Katrina and I when we get out of there. No, you were saying yeah. when he fell, he was okay. Though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's he's he's. Bro, totally it's crazy cool. how kids can fall and just not get hurt most of the time. Yeah, because if I fall in any shape, way, shape, yeah. or form, it's probably going to be an injury. Yeah. Well, there's two. We overreact. Well, there's two. Big and heavy. Well, there's two. Well, there's okay. Then there's three things we think about. It. There's uh, how big and heavy we are. There's also the distance, right? You fall from six oh, feet yeah, down yeah, the ground. That's, that's a long. Yeah, they're they're, like yeah. There's like a tipping over, right? <laughs> type type of deal. And they're so flexible, and pliable yeah. at that age. I mean, you could bend them and move them all over the place. But we're all stiff and old, so it's like. Yeah, a lot of times those falls that you would think would be really bad, a lot of times they just bounce oh, right back up. Like it's and especially good. now too with like gymnastic background. Like yeah. so, I told you guys Shoot. when I, because I was apprehensive about uh, Everett doing um, skateboarding and all that because it's just like, dude, it's all concrete, yeah. it's all like iron and all this, and he's just like every time he attempts it, he goes like a hundred percent, you know, and he's just like trying to jump and land and do. And I'm always like. Oh shit! Like this, something's gonna happen, and then one time, you know, you think it's gonna happen, he rolls out of it, or he pops up into a, a handstand, and I'm just like, oh, he's gonna be just fine. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He gets off balance, but then boom, psh, he, he sticks. Oh, it. that's great. That's, that's why crazy. that's such such that a that is great. That's why yeah. it's such a great foundation. Yeah, he'll right. be like that probably forever now. Because yeah, he's got he's got that. You know? I was so worried because I, I mean that's why I didn't I didn't get into skateboarding because I I ate it way too many times, and I'm just like this isn't like worth the punishment. You yeah. know, like this is. You, do they wear helmets now, kids? Yeah, yeah. Skateboarding. And it's it, yeah, because he he went all like almost like he was doing vert. You know, like he had like the knee yeah. uh, pads, he had the elbows, he had like the, and I mean, 
Courtney was kind of pushing that. And I was, you know, like helmet's fine, you know, like everything else, like you're just going to get it banged up a bit, but yeah. uh, he's starting to peel those off. Now he doesn't do it with the knees, the elbows. It's just the helmet. Yeah. So kids now pretty much all wear helmets when they do stuff like that. Most of them do. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Because when we were kids, kids that, are, that, you, that are like, like when rain. we were when we were kids, if you wore a helmet, you get bullied. Yeah, nobody wore a helmet. Like, don't be the kid with the helmet on. Everybody yeah, will make yeah. fun. That's of That's kind of coming back. Is it really? Uh, yes. Oh no! Unfortunately, <laughs> no. Yeah, I hate to break it to you. Oh, no. No, like, no, the cool kids are starting to take over again. Really? Like, hey, you know, but I'm like, I was like that. But hey, oh, you know, man. all you gotta do is see one guy hit his head real hard and then you change your mind. Yeah. Scary like that. Real quick. Um, I wanted to wait till we podcasted to bring this up because. Because I had at least three or four DMs. I saw it was in our forum. And uh, I saw mm. that Element had an article that came out. Oh and people were up in arms about something. Now, when I first read it, I was like, is this really that big of a deal? Or is this an example of where people like blow something out of proportion? Yep. But I sent it to you right away because I wanted to hear your opinion um, on it. And what is, like, first of all, what was it that everybody was up in arms? Something about maltodextrin. Uh, maltodextrin. Yeah. It was inside. It was found. Now it, they claimed they they said it was in there, just not that much. Is that what I understood? So what they're arguing, what what the the controversy is over, is over a uh, four or five hundred milligram amount of maltodextrin in a packet of LMNT. Just so everybody understands what that is, it's less than half of a gram of maltodextrin. It's less than you would even have to report on any label. Hmm. Uh, FDA, if you want to put zero grams of sugar or carbs, um, that would definitely qualify. It's so low. So okay. this is an example. We've talked about this before on the podcast. Yeah. Like, uh, I cannot believe it's butter. says it's zero calories. It's really not zero calories. It's a half it's a calorie. It's so low. It's so low grade. that they can get away with saying it's zero. And so, of course, they report zero. So right. here's an example of something where they're... and Because I know that's what people are upset is like, well, why wouldn't they disclose or report it? Well, they don't... This FDA doesn't force them to. Because no, and it's so low. Now, they said they thought it was lower. So their reporting came back from their manufacturers who said, oh, it's less than that. But it turns out it's a little more. But it's still so low, it doesn't matter. It's still zero. It's Even still at the 100 zero. times? Because I know that was... So 100 the, times. So, so 5 milligrams to 500 milligrams, it's 100 times more. But 500 milligrams is 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 half of a gram. So even at the mm. the exaggerated amount, Correct. it's still it's a half still a gram. Half. Correct. Now, oh, if yeah. somebody has some extreme um, no, I saw. I actually all saw things. all the diabetic people and all the the glucose monitor people all say that they take it every day and it's never. It doesn't affect yeah, their blood never, sugar. Yeah. It won't. Spike it won't. It now, some people might have uh, an allergic reaction to maltodextrin or something like that. In yeah. those extreme cases, I could see okay, yeah, you probably you, want to stay away. Yeah. But it's 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 nothing. It it doesn't it doesn't matter. And of course, the reason why everybody's mad is because it wasn't reported. I also saw part of the controversy too was that uh, when they f they first called him out, then the guy who works for Element that originally responded on or on a tweet is not even somebody who's like part of like yeah. the formulation and like, you know, basically spoke out of turn and said no, it's only got this much. Yeah. And then when they actually tested it, it comes back that it's a hundred times whatever he quoted and yeah. said. And so everybody is like jumping on that. One, it wasn't disclosed. Two, the guy said it was uh, yeah. it was less than this. And then it comes back a hundred times. And a hundred times just sounds... It sounds like crazy. Sounds crazy. But a hundred times takes it from zero to half a gram, essentially. It's, it's a half a gram. In other words, if you took... If you took four packets of LMNT a day, which is more than you would, that's 4,000 milligrams of sodium, you probably want to stick to one or two. But let's just say you did four packets a day. You have a combined total of two grams of maltodextrin. Two yeah. grams, yeah. which is nothing. And, and if you look at other... And now here's, here's the part that makes me kind of like, okay, everybody relax. I, this wellness space can be so attacking oh, yeah. itself over yeah. the smallest little Eating things themselves from within. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's like, that doesn't, it doesn't matter. And and I think the re, they're, what LMNT is saying, if I'm not mistaken is, Hey, they reported to us, the people that make it, that it was less than we thought, but mm -hmm. it's also less than half. It's a half. And a I grand. think, I think it's important mm -hmm. too, because I, I had a lot of people too, that said like, they wanted to hear our opinion on it because they trust like our view on it. Cause if you've been listening to us long enough, you know, the story that goes all the way back to when we first started working with Organifi, um, Organifi is one of our biggest partners. They have been for shit almost eight years now, I think. Um, and there was an article that came out that said that, that a lot of these big organic companies had all kinds of metals, heavy metals, heavy metals yeah. in it. And we right away 
called them and was like, you got to test and find out if you have this because we're not okay with heavy metals being in there. And we would drop a brand, a brand, by the way, pays us four yeah. times the amount we're, that we're element sponsors. does to do that. We would, we would definitely drop that if over something like that, yeah. that we think is a bigger deal. This is something. And they did test everything. There was no. Yeah. Yeah. But, so that was the. the but no, like again, so people get confused. By the way, supplement companies used to do this back in the day to make things appear either more or less than they are. So remember, milligrams to grams. It takes a thousand milligrams to make one gram. So if you want to have one gram of carbs or one gram of fat or whatever, it's going to be a thousand milligrams of that thing. Micrograms are even smaller. So a company could say. This has, uh, you know, 500 micrograms of something, which is less than a milligram, which is a one 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 hundredth of a gram, and it can make it look like it's a lot because it's in micrograms. Mm. Um, but no, we count carbs, proteins, and fats, or sugars, in grams. One gram of sugar is one thousand milligrams. Okay, yeah, yeah. this has half yeah. of that, so yeah. it's half of a gram yeah. of carbs. You wouldn't even add that in your if you're tracking your calories. No, you wouldn't no. even put that in there. No. So it's it's no it's basically yeah, it's zero. Significant enough. It's basically zero. What you get is sodium, uh, magnesium, potassium, and you get a, a dose of sodium that is sufficient to make a difference. That's that's the big. I deal. mean, the thing that right away came to mind for me before I even sent it to you and started digging, I'm like, oh, this just shows you how competitive the electrolyte market is getting right now. Where it's well, like, LMNT changed the game. Is why. Yeah. yeah. They introduced the product yeah, that was a thousand. Nobody fall. was nobody had the balls. Excuse my language. To put a thousand milligrams of sodium in anything because everybody's so scared of sodium. Yeah. The makers of Element T are like, no, no, we understand how sodium works. We understand how, especially with low carb dieters, people who don't eat, you know, heavily processed foods, uh, people who, you know, are exercising a lot. Like if they're going to take something with electrolytes, you want more sodium than a hundred milligrams. You're gonna want a thousand. You're gonna want a gram of sodium in there. And and they did, and they proved the model, and it's crushing. And it crushed. So now you get a lot of competition, copycats. Yeah, yeah. And they're trying to poke fun at them by saying things like, our sodium is better and yours has yeah. this. And we have It's like, all right, yeah, everybody yeah, relax. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Do we have a shout out? Yeah. Why don't you guys uh, shout out the doctor that you guys met who I didn't get a chance to meet. You guys Dr. said she was- Dr. Stacey? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You guys- What's uh, her Instagram? Oh, yeah. She's a, she's a functional- Dentist. I'm excited to hopefully meet her because uh, everybody uh, from our team that got a chance to speak with her said she was pretty awesome. And so I know I'm, the great one, I'm shouting out somebody I haven't even met, but I can tell <laughs> yeah, just I from know. you guys and what you said about her, it sounds like uh, she'd be really cool to have on the show. So, so it's Dr. Underscore Stacy S T. A C I. Now, did you guys say she's like an orthodontist or dentist or what was she? Dentist. Functional, 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 dentist. Dentist. functional dentist. So yeah. explain to me what is de what's a functional de dentist versus Yeah, she's a, gonna have to explain. Do they that. not it's use like, like you know a holistic anesthesia approach? Or what, like holistic. Holistic approach and, and uh, she really like educates to the health of of the gums, the, the, like uh, a lot of the indications that we ignore and and um there's other like practices that she was describing to us about like kind of sealing uh, cavities and allowing them to heal and like, you know, different, different approaches that takes, she, she really described the dentist industry as like the most archaic, archaic, barbaric practice. I've been saying that for right now. I, exactly. That's why it's like, Adam's going to love you. Dude. Yeah. 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 He's been talking mad trash and she's like, I'm all for it. It's, oh, like, well, uh, it's going to be good. Like to give up. you an example, be like, uh, you know, using fluoride to prevent cavity formation or using hydroxy apatite, I think it's called, That's, which actually yes. remineralizes your teeth and helps you regrow or heal cavities which they never talked about before. Exactly. So that would be functional. I, re I remember, yeah. uh, the, uh, I've had so many weird dentist stories. Um, and so I remember when I was drinking those rock stars every day and I, I had, I started to get like the, the acidity was eating at yeah, my yeah. teeth eat at and, the enamel. and I didn't even have to fill it or anything just by getting rid of it, flushing my mouth, healed, getting, healed it, it healed itself. And yeah. I'm like, Oh, I didn't even know that was possible. Like mm -hmm. I thought once yep. you had like a cavity or something like exactly. that, exactly. That's you what had like to, to believe. Yeah. yeah. We were let, like, you have it. Oh, you got to fill it. And it's just yeah. like, Oh no, the, your teeth will actually heal and grow Dude, back. Like if she you was talking it. about not even using like Novocaine and like needles and like drilling and being able to use lasers. And I'm like, I'm going to ask you all about that one. Oh, gets interesting. Home. Yeah. Oh, so, very cool. It'll be cool. It'll be there's really your good. Shout, there's your shout out. Element T is an electrolyte powder you add to your water that gives you the right amount of sodium. Look, most electrolyte powders out there don't have enough sodium to really make a difference. You need the sodium. You need it for muscle contractions. You need it for better pumps. You need it for performance. Of course, it also has potassium and magnesium. No sugar, no artificial sweeteners, but it tastes amazing. Go check them out. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash 
Mind Pump on that link, you'll get a free sample pack with any drink mix purchase. All right, here comes the show. Our first caller is Nils from Hungary. Nils, what's going on, man? What's going on, Nils? What's, yeah, for, din what's for dinner? Hello, guys. <laughs> How can we help you? Um, uh, pumpkin and uh, chicken breast. Nice. So pretty hey. basic. I, I like meal. it. That works. It's local here. So how can we help and you? So it's uh, nice to see you guys Same. after listening to you for like uh, four years. Um, so I will stick to the question, get right into it. I'm 20 years old, a uh, digital nomad. Um, I've been listening to you guys for four years now. Um, just want to say it's uh, crazy how four to five uh, strangers can have such a huge impact on a young guy's life. And uh, of the, on the other side of the world, at the moment I'm in uh, Hungary. So since tuning in, I've completely transformed my training. I'm actually excited about uh, the idea of becoming a dad uh, someday. Um, I didn't want to do it uh, before. And I've even started going to the church again, which is uh, a big transition for me. So for the question, uh, despite being highly active and diligent with my fitness and nutrition, I'm struggling with uh, really low energy levels, um, which got a little bit better by now. Um, a bit of background, I used to train intensely for a special uh, special forces in Germany um, with uh, 12 to 14 sessions a week um, but then I got uh, into a little bit of a motorcycle accident uh, and uh, so I was uh, unsuitable for this uh, dream um, I mean I recovered by then um, but I um, don't train that intensely by now um, now I train uh, for about 90 minutes a day push pull legs with some cardio once or twice a week and on the rest days, I usually do uh, like an ab workout, some light cardio or something like this. And I, I, I track my calories, which is uh, around 2,500 calories a day and focus on protein. Um, on the other hand, I, I like to work a lot. Um, I work uh, 10 to 12 hours a day and um, had a li little bit of a problem with caffeine, uh, but it's uh, turned it out, uh, turned it down a bit uh, by now. And yeah, that's... Um, it overall and yeah i try try to get my energy levels back but i'm still struggling like it's a uh, since two years now and it's getting better i think but re really slowly with uh, many pushbacks along the way okay Niels. so the main issue is energy you you're, you just feel like your energy is really low correct yeah uh, for how, especially how, for my age how, yeah how tall and how much do you weigh i mean i already know it's you're way overtrained based off of your work hours and the 90 minute sessions and what you got going on but give me your height and and, and weight so i know how bad it is so uh, it's in european metrics i'm one meter 93 which is i think six foot three or six foot four. Oh wow and then 95 kilos Okay. So like 200 pounds. Yeah. You're a big boy. Too. So, so when, whenever somebody has just kind of persistent low energy, there's a, a list of, uh, of things you want to look at and there's a priority of where you start. Uh, and the reason why that you start, uh, with some things and then move down a list is because the things you start with tend to be the issue. And if those aren't the issue, then you move down the list until you find the problem at the top of this. Whenever somebody says to me, I'm just having persistent low energy, um, and they're active, uh, the, the first thing I do is I look at their workout, their training, their work schedule, and I back off on it. That's the first thing that I do. The first thing I would do is back off on that. Second thing I would look at, and I think this might even be tied for one, is their sleep. How consistent is your sleep? Is it good? Are you getting poor sleep? The third thing is diet. Are you eating enough? Are you lacking any nutrients? Are you feeding your body appropriately? And, and the way we look at that is a context of activity, plus your goals, your current body size, whether you're male or female. And you know, based off of everything you're, you've told us. All three he checks. Yeah, I, I, you know, sleep wise. So we haven't talked about your sleep. How is your sleep? So that's uh, one thing I'm really persistent. I always sleep if I am if uh, the same hours, so eight hours a night, um, okay. sometimes seven, sometimes even a bit more. So I think this one I have uh, in check. Okay, you're, you're, you're probably working out too much and eating too little. I mean, a guy your size, your height, doing 90 minutes, six days a week of strength training, plus some cardio, 2,500 calories is low. Way low. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know very many people that can consistently train for an hour and a half strength training. Now, maybe in short spurts, you know, like a month or two, but then you got to back way down. Uh, you're, you're most likely overtrained. In fact, I bet if you took a, a week off, 
and increased your calories and then went back to maybe like a three day a week routine, you'd probably see your energy levels um, rectify within a short period of time, within a week or two. Yeah, I bet a MAPS 15 protocol mm -hmm. would change everything for him. Yeah. Going from a 90 minute workout to a 20 minute workout, too effective. I mean, Nils, I don't, I don't know if you're paying attention to the series I'm doing on Mind Pump TV, but you and I are about the same. We we're actually really close. I was 199 pounds. I'm six foot three. Uh, and you watch me go through this process, and it's uh, two exercises a day, five days a week, mm -hmm. sometimes six. So, and that's it. There's nothing else on top of that. And I started only eating uh, 22, uh, about 2,200 calories, and reversed my way all the way back to uh, 3,200 calories. So it increased by a thousand calories, only doing two exercises uh, a day, five to six days a week, yeah. never going to failure. Um, always probably lifting at 60 to 70% intensity at most, um, and, and, and built significant muscle and lost body fat in that time. Mm -hmm. And so you're just way, way overdoing it for everything you got. And we're not, we didn't even mention the 10 to 12 hours a day of work also. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you do for work, but even if it's not a laborious job, 10 to 12 hours mentally can be very draining and is considered a stress. And so you have to understand that all these all these things that we're doing physically or mentally uh, count as as stress. And when your stress bucket uh -huh. gets overfilled, the body is just going to uh, revolt, and you're not going to see the results, whether it's building muscle or burning body fat that you want to see. How long have you been working out this way? So, to, I, I thought I, I was doing. Uh, not that much compared to what I was doing before. So I thought it was on the lower end. And now like the, the, the maps 20 minutes sounds, I, I of course know what's it about, what's it about, but it's. Oh, no, my, my, my turned off. It's, it sounds scary. Um, <laughs> well, I've... I mean, consider this Niels. So <laughs> again, how long have you been working out like this or how long have you been working out more than like more than this? How long has it been? Um, two years, uh, yeah. maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so here, here's what it probably looked um, like. I'll, I'll just paint the picture, okay? You, you were doing more than this, and at first you were okay because you could tolerate it, and then it started to feel like you were burnt out. So you mm -hmm. cut it down to ninety minutes a day, and then eh, you felt a little better, but now you're starting to feel burnt out again. It's all too much. It's yeah. all too much. Now, <laughs> yeah, you could train like this for short stints. But not all the time. And, and what you don't want to do is get caught in the trap of, well, that person did that, and I could do this before and whatever. Because you're you're just kind of dig a, digging a hole little by little. And so you're in a place now where you got to back way off. Also, mm -hmm. keep in mind that when you are training for special forces, the desired outcome is very different than when you're trying to build a physique or, or create a healthy fitness routine. You know, they, they care less about, you know, your body fat percentage and how you look on, you know, in the mirror. They care more about your resiliency, your ability to take a beating and still be able to fire a gun and get up and go like totally different uh, goal. It's not about physical fitness. I mean, if you look at uh, special forces training, everybody that gets into that is fit. The ones that last are the ones that have the mental fortitude and that's what they're, that's what they're testing. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, um, here, here's how you'll know, Niels, and don't be afraid because here's what's going to happen. Do what we say. You'll know within two weeks and you won't lose muscle in two weeks. You could take two weeks off. You're not going to lose any muscle. You could take four weeks off and you wouldn't lose any muscle, but, uh, back way off within the first week or two, you'll know. Yeah. You'll feel it. I can almost guarantee you'll see an energy increase yeah. uh, with this new protocol. It's just been the case with everybody. We've moved in that direction. Even us personally, it was, you know, really eye opening. We didn't think it was like going to have that much impact. Uh, it was just like an option. Oh, let's, you know, create something that's convenient for people to work out. But what turned out was this was actually more effective uh, for most people than it was even the three day protocol. That's right. So you just gotta you just gotta trust. We're gonna we're gonna send that over to you, Nils. Okay, and I really want you to trust. The, if you've been listening to us for a long time, I hope we've built some trust with you. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, if you've stuck around for as long as you Definitely. have. Okay, so hopefully you you believe that we kind of know what we're doing. And if I mean, just give give me thirty days, even though I think it'll be sooner. 
Yeah. But give me 30 days of following MAPS 15. And, and get your calories you're up. Trip yeah. Out. yeah go, that's, get so up to 2,800 calories I would, at least. Even yeah. just a little bump. <laughs> just bump your calories a couple hundred and go to MAPS 15. And that right there, you should instantly feel yeah. a difference in the Within first Within the first week or two. Yeah. You, you feel weak. Like, uh, I'm sorry for the... I have to like a pussy, you know, if you just uh, train so little, um, <laughs> so little, you. I mean, just, well, it says nothing about watch, go, go to the YouTube channel, mind pump TV and pick up and watch the, the series I'm creating right now. I'm documenting my whole process. And so you, if you feel like that, like, trust me, I feel like it too. I actually talk about that in there too. So watch it. Yeah, I will. I will. All right. All right. We're going to send that over to you, Nils. Yeah. Um, bump, bump the calories by at least 200 calories. Mm -hmm. Follow MAPS 15, the way it's laid out, the advanced version. And then uh, I'd love to hear from you in like 30 days. And then I'll have Doug also send you a link to the docuseries so you can watch that too. Do those things. And then I promise you, you'll be happy in 30 days. I, I, I will. I will. I will stick to it 30 days, uh, even though it's scary. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. All right. You got, got it. it. All right, Completely Nils. different discipline. You Thank you, it. guys. Right, you got Nils. it, man. Thank you. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye -bye. Yeah. I hope he does it. Well, you know. Doug, send him the link to the series. Too, we, develop, we develop this interesting, especially if you're a fanatic, you develop a, a relationship with uh, your exercise program where you're afraid to, something inside you makes you afraid to let it go. Is it the loss of progress? Is it the... Attachment you develop to the yes, the routine the of routine it of it. I mean, it could be that any of those things or all of the above. But yeah. um, it's very clear what's happening. I mean, look, I'm going to be straight up. Everybody totally. listening to this right now, everybody, very few people can work out strength training six days a week for years and not reach this point. Yeah. Just doesn't happen. The most people, I mean, you if you're really fit, good diet, good sleep, like everything's dialed in. You could do sprints like this, you know, 60 days, 90 days, but you got to go back to, you know, to something that's more stasis, man. appropriate. I mean, you, you're, you know, 90 minutes a day for six days a week for two years. Uh, I, I mean, I can't, I, I would be fried after two, three months of training that way. And we yeah. didn't really dive into what kind of job he does, but 12, 14 hour days of, of work is. Yeah. Especially it, if it's or, labor intensive. Yeah. It's like, and then the whole, like the whole self judgment thing, like I feel like a pussy or I yeah. feel like a, like, huh? Well, you know, you're not, this isn't a, yeah, well, that's like, this isn't a competition discipline, like drilled into his head. That's, right. But, not, but discipline works both ways. Yeah. And, and, and one way it's making it happen. The other way is knowing when to stop. So you, you can lack discipline either direction. Well, you're not going to feel like a big pussy when you're way stronger than you were before. Well, that's what I was going to say. The, the exciting <laughs> part about this is uh, put all those emotions and feelings and nervousness, whatever, aside. And if you just trust the process for 30 days, the results are so big that you're like, what was I doing? It's a very obvious yeah, switch. Exactly. And it's not hard to stick with it after that because – if you, it's the disbelief is what it is. So you're yeah. trying to like, put, like, you know, what is it? I don't know. What, like it's the disbelief that you could actually work that little and see that good of results. But once you do there, it's always a big aha moment mm -hmm. for people of like, Oh shit. Like yeah. I literally was spinning my wheels, not even realizing it. And I could be doing so much. And then, cause his energy will go up, his strength will go yeah. up. Yeah. He'll see a difference in his body composition. I mean, everything will, get, will go in the you right direction. You and you gotta believe in it. Yeah. Our next caller is Olivia from Miami. Hi Olivia. How you doing Olivia? How can we help you? Oh really? It I'm says Miami on here. <laughs> oh my okay. god, that's funny. Well, <laughs> uh, she's like, I wish. Uh, I wish my, I wish Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably have a lot easier time training from what I'm about to explain. <laughs> so my question is, I am a bodybuilder. So you guys know what that training looks like. And I um, have done two fitness competitions and we have, I have three children and my husband is kind of like, okay, like let's transition to something different. And I said, okay, let's go hike the Grand Canyon. <laughs> and so he said, okay, sure. And we si we decided to hike it in one day um, and we started looking into it and we're like, okay, we better, you know, I was a division one athlete in volleyball and, but I am 41 years old. So I'm like, well, we better train for this because as you know, as a bodybuilder, like, you know, I, cardio really isn't my number one go-to. Um, so I'm just, my question is what should training look like to continue to lift 
like a bodybuilder, but to really get ready to hike the Grand Canyon all in one day. Give, Olivia, me, how, give, give me an idea on how the, many miles is it? Yeah, how what's yeah what's the length of this thing? So, so rim it's to rim is twenty four miles with um, over eight thousand feet in elevation change. Okay, yeah. you, you know you're overthinking it. Uh, you know, let me tell you why. Um, if you train like a bodybuilder, you probably have pretty high volume style training, especially for your lower body. Um, yeah. Hiking is not like a super hardcore cardio activity for someone who it's trains energy conservation, like yeah. a bodybuilder. Like you, you, in fact, I mean, you, it would be hard, but you could probably just do it right now. Yeah. Uh, without any training. Right. Now, if you really want to make it, you know, um, easier and kind of, you know, actually train for it, I would just practice hiking quite a bit. Rucking would be good yeah. and just back off on the strength training. Right. You know, you could do uh, okay. MAPS 15, you know, style training, or you could strength train once a week, twice a week, and then do like two long hikes yeah. I'm, a week. I mean, here's what's That's really it. exciting Thanks. about somebody who's, and I just saw a picture of your physique, you look incredible. And so somebody, and I'm, I'm assuming you've got years, if not decades of strength training underneath your belt. Uh, one of yes. the, one of the most, one of my favorite studies we've ever shared on here is the amount of training volume required to keep your physique, right? So it's very difficult. You obviously know how hard it was to build the body that you currently have right now. It probably took years and consistency for a very long time. The beautiful thing is it, yes. takes, it takes one seventh the volume. So to put that in perspective, let's pretend that you train seven days a week, one hour a day, every day. You could train one hour a week, that's it, and maintain that physique. So in the context, yeah, that's, that's where it's at. <laughs> so, 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 and that's where it's hard. So think about that. So, uh, and you don't necessarily need to scale all the way back to that, but that just puts into perspective how little it takes to keep yeah. what you've done. And so what you could literally do is drop 50% of your training volume from where it's currently at. And then you could replace it with some, you know, these hour hikes that you do, like either the rucking, like Sal suggested, or incline or Stairmaster to build. So what's, some... what's rucking? Rucking, you put on a backpack. Weighted backpack, yeah. And you put some weight okay. in there. You put because if you're going to be hiking, I'm assuming you'll have a backpack on uh, with some supplies. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, yep. so here's the deal: you you pro you you have the fitness to do these hikes. What you probably lack is the skill of hiking with a backpack on yes. that kind of stuff. That's all. Yeah. So I would do a couple hikes a week for, you know, eight miles. Okay. You know, Don't go crazy. You know, an eight mile hike with a backpack on. So you can get used to the backpack, know how to place it, where to hold it, kind of how to hold your positioning, um, back off on the strength training just cause you're going to be doing, you know, more hiking. Yeah. But I mean, to be honest with you, if you're in this body, this is an event though, too. So yeah. this is something where you're going to expand all your energy and output then during the event. So this is leading up to that. You don't really right. need to get that close to that type of exertion. No, it's not going to do you well anyways. So no. just to barely touch it, like Sal saying, like get into the skill of it and actually like the efficiency uh, uh, you know, and that's really it. I would be more concerned if you were like a power lifter and you rarely trained outside of like four reps, um, or if you plan on running this rather than hiking it. But if you, if you train bodybuilder style, high volume, your reps are getting the 15, 20 rep range. Um, the altitude might be a little bit of a challenge, um, but really the only way to get ready, okay. you know, get, get used to that is to actually, you know, train in altitude. Uh, right. but uh, you, you know, now what about, what about walking? What about walking backwards on a treadmill? What do you think about that? I mean, that's fine. If you have, if you have, do you have knee pain? Yeah, do you have knee stability issues? Stability issues or anything? Well, I mean, I am old. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're 41 you're and you're old. fit. You're I mean, if we fine. were to be more prescriptive, it would look like this, right? I mean, let me hear if you guys agree. There would be a, there, you would scale back on the, the strength training. That's the first and foremost. You need to back off that volume. And I would back off as much as 50% of what you're currently doing. And you'll still keep that physique. And then I would do three hikes a week, a low, a medium, and a high, and your high is still only eight to 10 miles. So you're never pushing okay. beyond that right now. And a, and a low, I don't know, would be somewhere two to three, and then a four to five range, yeah. and then maybe yeah. an eight, eight mile range, yeah, that's a three times a week. Okay. Like do that and, and, and then, and then reduce the training volume by 50%. A lot, a lot really of it really is going to be, yeah, your shoes. That's it. It's you're going to be your shoes, the friction, like all that kind of stuff is like what you got to get acclimated to. So to, to emulate that as okay. much as possible is going to be good. That's, that's, that's what the, the skill part. That and that's the thinking. three times yep. a week, low, medium and high. It's right, right in what Adam yeah, was talking about. Yeah. Cause you, what'll happen is you'll take somebody who's relatively fit. They'll go on a long hike and then 
they'll be like, oh yeah, that was kind of hard, but the big problem was it just the straps it, of the backpack were it just, causing problems, or my shoes, oh my God, after mile five, my feet yeah. got messed up. So. I just went to Jackson Hole, this just happened to me, I and we went on a, I don't know, it was probably a four mile hike, uh, totally easy for me condition wise, the altitude got me a little bit, you know what it was, I my right side, my foot and ankle and everything was sore as shit just because I was wearing chucks, not the right gear. <laughs> you didn't train for chucks. Yeah, I just, you know, <laughs> like an idiot, going. like an idiot. I didn't prepare. For, well, I didn't even know we were going to do it. So a little def- a little bit of a defense on my part. But point being is I'm just pointing out what Sal is saying is that that was the main thing. Had I conditioned my feet and my ankles, wearing the proper yeah. attire, did it a few times before, like something close to that in volume lines, it would have been a breeze. But I paid for it a little bit yeah. because I didn't do any of that. And and but you'll right. be you'll be fine. You do that three times a week. Do the protocol I told you. Yep. Low, medium, high day of of hiking. Put the boots on. Put a backpack yep. on. You'll be fine. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Well, awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. I love you. You what? guys are the ones that made me get back into fitness. And are you following? Any what was our, that? Are you following any of our maps programs right now? No, I kind of just do everything and all the things because <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to see you fall like an advanced maps 15 right now yeah, that just, would be for the, great. just for this time period when, okay. when, are you, when are you doing the hike um well we are actually supposed to do it this october but my sister-in-law actually passed away oh, um sorry. and so now we're doing it so now we have an, like nine more months to train for it oh, wow. oh nine, nine months nine. Oh, never. which is awesome yeah you don't need to get you don't need to prepare that far no. but yeah. we have michigan winters too yeah. Yeah, but you're 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 oh yeah you're over to yeah, so I, we I would the Michigan winter that so I would I'd probably I would practice hiking like maybe five six weeks out yeah. as long as you're working out this whole time you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then that's when you okay. could transition. Awesome. To map, that's when you would transition over to yeah. it, Maps 15 is when yeah. you get like the challenge six would, weeks out. The, okay. Honestly, again, the challenge would be if you were running it or if you were hiking back to back to back days. That's yeah. when it starts to become a problem. But if you're bodybuilding. Um, you're, you're already training high volume for your lower body. Like yeah. one one long hike on one day, yeah. you'll be fine. The next day you'll be sore, yeah. but you'll be fine. A, a key thing too, right. I mean, this is getting way ahead of ourselves because it's nine months away, but uh, you want to go into it. So I would probably cut my weight training the week before. Oh yeah. So you're fully fresh okay. going into the hike. So yeah. you do the thing, do the protocol like we yeah. said, do the protocol like we said, the week before yeah. your day on the hike, Cut the training. No more. No more training, and just let your body yeah. be. Go to it fully fresh. Totally. You'll be ready. You'll crush it. You'll crush it. Okay. Cool. Well, awesome. I'm excited. All right. Awesome. All right, Olivia. That's great. Thanks for calling in. Well, thank you so much. You got it. It'd be a fun hike. Yeah. You know. Again, if, if <laughs> she was gonna do, if she's like, we were gonna hike, you know, twenty miles a day for seven days. Right. Okay. Now we got to try. Or if I had to run it, mm-hmm. or and, run and, it, and I had a time, I was trying to. Beat yeah, but yeah. like you know, if you're bodybuilding, train, you compete, uh, and you train with that kind of volume, you'll be okay. It'll be hard, but honestly, the big considerations are what I said: shoes, backpack. Like how those Bro, things the, feel the, in the body. That's exactly what fucked me up. It was of my sh- my shoes, and like, it was nothing to do with like my ability to do the that's hike. Right. That was easy. It was the fact that I didn't have the proper attire, mm-hmm. and my feet weren't used to yeah. walking over rocks like that. That's and it. Chuck's not smart. <laughs> hey, sorry to interrupt. Real quick, Maps Resistance and Maps OCR for this month are fifty percent off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Mosey from Virginia. Mosey, what's happening? Hi, how are you guys? Good, good. how are you? How are you? Good, good. Um, so, uh, thanks for having me. And uh, um, I'll go ahead and start it. Um, I have some notes. I'm going to read off of my notes here. Uh, so, first, I want to um, give a shout out to a few experts in, you know, in this space, like the three of you guys, um, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, uh, Mike Israel, and a few others who, like, really helped me changed my mindset uh, towards health and fitness and also helped me to have uh, a much better relationship with food. Great. Um, so a little background about myself. So I'm 36 years old, uh, five foot four. By the end of last year, I was at my uh, lowest point in terms of my physical and the mental health. Uh, my weight was at 199 pounds at a, a 45% body fat. Uh, since last December, I joined a local boot camp. Um, I know Adam thinks all this class need to die, but <laughs> it's here. <laughs> um, so at the same time, um, I was pretty consistent uh, eating at a, cal- at a calorie de- deficit around 1,800. 
with a daily protein intake about uh, 150 grams. So by July this year, I lost about 25 pounds body weight, dropped 10% body fat, and gained a one pound of lean muscle. Uh, and then, of course, I hit a plateau. So after listening to the few episodes about why women need to bulk, um, I decided to reverse diet and slash bulk. Um, so I up my calorie to about 2,300 with a daily protein intake over 180 grams. Um, so about two weeks ago, I did another body scan. Uh, so my weight did not change, um, but I did drop additional 2% of body fat and gained two and a half pounds of lean muscle. Hell yeah. um, so immediately on that day, I threw my scale away. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good for you. So, yeah. Um, so my question was, so here's where I'm going. So for many reasons that I am not able to go to a regular gym at the end, um, so this boot camp is really the only option that I have. Uh, eventually, I would like to go back to a regular gym. Um, so I've been going to the boot camp about pretty consistently five to six days a week. I know it's a lot. Um, and just hear me out. So on those strength days, I've been very intentional on the workout. So focus on the progressive overload, range of motion, and of course, um, following Adam's journey on YouTube, you know, making lightweight feel heavy. And of course, the, you know, focus on the forms of technique. Um, the result of that is that my strength grew like exponentially. Uh, just give give an example, like my dumbbell deadlift went from like 80 pounds in the beginning to like a 160 um, most recently. So um, recently I do realize that I'm probably overtrained, so I cut out on the cardio days. So here are my questions, which is two parts. One is short-term goal, one is long-term. So the short-term goal is like my husband and I, we're going to have our 10-year valve renewal, and I would like to fit in the dress, uh, which is in about six weeks. Uh, given that I am eating 2,300 calorie right now, which is, you know, in the quote-unquote bulking, uh, my question is, should I keep bulking during that six weeks? Uh, the part two question, which is the long-term, is 2,300 calories for my size is actually a lot of food. Um, so while I can easily meet my protein goal daily, but sometimes I do have a harder time meeting my carbs and the fat goals. My question is, does that matter? Uh, the last question, which really um, what I wrote in um, for this is, you know, like many people and especially women who enjoy those group classes, and I don't think those group classes are going to go away. Um, if that's the only option that we have or love, how do we make the most out of those? Uh, group classes for maximum gain. Great, great question. Great, great detail. Incredible job what you're doing. Um, when I would teach these classes, I had several client friends of mine that would take the class. And what you're doing is exactly how I would communicate to them because they enjoyed coming to the class. It was their only option. They said, okay, Adam, I believe in everything you're saying. And I, how do I take this class? And, and still be able to modify it. and you're doing it. So I would tell them like, get rid of the circuit shit and the competitiveness of going around, take your time, rest when everybody else is moving and jumping and doing stuff, focus on trying to get heavier weight and get stronger. You're doing all the right things for someone who is going to take those classes, reducing the amount of cardio, focusing on getting strong, I, you're and you're obviously your results are showing. Now the cool part, let's get to the calories and getting ready for this dress, right? So. Because you tell me that you're up to 2,300 and 2,300 is a lot of calories right now, we could go on a little cut right now. We could go and we could do this. And since since I have six weeks, I'd probably do a little cut for two weeks. Then I'd probably go back to a little mini bulk and then I would finish off the final weeks in a cut again. So, and the little bulk would only be like for one week. So I'd put you on a quick cut right now. We drop 300 to 400 calories a day, changing nothing else, just the calories, right? If you can, you can add some walking in there to increase the deficit. So if you can get some little walks in, increase your steps, that would help speed this up. We do that for two weeks, maybe three weeks, interrupt it with a one week kind of bulk again, bumping the calories back to 2300 and then go right back down again one more time for the final. And you'll probably get the best results you can in six weeks. Obviously, six weeks is the middle amount of time. We're not going to see huge difference because you're already doing great already. That's probably what I would do with you in this case. 
What, uh, okay. Why is the the uh, boot camp class your only option? How, how do you what do you mean by that? Um, it comes well. First is it comes with a childcare, so oh, okay. it's just easier. Um, and I know some gyms that do offer um like child watch, but I think you know it is forty five minutes. It's easy. I just show up. I don't have to you know rock the weights, and that's the one thing I don't enjoy. When I go to a regular gym, it's, you know, you had to put a wave song and rock it and then <laughs> reorganize it. So um, I just show up and do the workout for my minutes and I'm done. And then my my daughter have a great time there, too, for 45 minutes. Okay. Um, eventually, I do want to go back to a, a regular gym, you know, follow some of the your program. But, uh, um, currently, that's. That's where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, the Could reason you, I know why Sal's asking yeah. it's definitely would be ideal for us to do that. Yeah. Okay. Are you, are you, would hiring a personal trainer for the next six weeks be an option? Um, I thought about it, but I think there's a, a budget constraint. Okay. Um, just, yeah. Okay. All right. Cause that, that's where I would point you, uh, because then you could probably utilize some daycare and you wouldn't train with a trainer very often. It would be like once a week and then you would do maybe one or two week, uh, you know, workouts on your own. But I, I, uh, what you're doing is totally fine. It's just when you're doing the workouts in the boot camp, make it less cardio, make it more strength training, which it sounds like you're kind of doing. You know, take rest, take breaks, make it a strength training type workout. You're moving in the right direction. Um, I like Adam's advice for the six weeks. Um, it's a short period of time, but in that six week period, if you did everything right, you'd probably drop another three percent body fat, something like that. I would say. Yeah, you could. Yeah, the, we could. We can make moves right now. You definitely can. And you, honestly, you really are doing about as good as you could do with the constraints of a boot camp type of yeah. class. I mean, the fact that you got the results you did, I'm very impressed. That means you did a lot of things the right way in the context of training five, six days a week in a class setting like that. Yep. That's pretty incredible, especially the amount of weight that you had lost, or excuse me, the body fat percentage you lost, and to have not lost muscle, you actually yeah. put on a couple pounds of muscle. I have That a, really I, highlights you did a really mm -hmm. good job. And I and I, I, I have a hunch that you have you. pretty good muscle build, building and strength building genetics. Yeah. Did Were you an athlete growing up? Does it run in your family? No, not at all. Actually, I did not. <laughs> I actually grew up as a chubby child, and um, and I think part of it is thanks to my husband, who's been very consistent with the strength training, and he ha he wasn't like professionally, but he is a, kind of like a power lifter, I would say. So ah. he helped me with a lot of the um, the training technique and the form. Ah, so I have a, yeah. some well, knowledge. That's um, and I'm yeah. And and I have I'm mean, always interested in the science side. That's why it gravitates, you know, content like you guys and Mike Isterta and also even Jeff Nipper who will get very sciencey. So I'm interesting in in those content, which yeah. helps a lot. Yeah, the fact that you gained muscle and got leaner while doing those kind of classes it's tells me impressive. that you and the weight that you said you're doing with your with your exercises and how much you went uh -huh. up. You you, you react yeah. pretty well. I, I would I would uh, I would guess that. Yeah, I would estimate that if you switch to Barbell you know training. more traditional strength yeah. training, you would yeah. get really where, good. Do you results. have where, any weights at your house? Where does or? your husband train? Yeah, where does he train? Uh, he goes to the regular gym, so he usually goes like he goes like a long workout, like three hours after okay. our daughter goes to bed. So oh. like there's that scheduling logistic um, reason that you know why I can't really do that um, yeah. at the moment. So yeah, yeah, no, uh, but also like the. He's starting to go off track, and also he's, um, uh, you know, a compromise that he doesn't get enough, like uh, he doesn't get a, uh, enough sleep. So we're kind of like taking half and half right now. Yeah, I, see. Yeah. I mean, he, you at one point, uh, it sounds like too, he's given you really good. At one point, training like him would be one of the best things you could do. Oh yeah. I mean, if he's like a power lifter type yeah. of trainer, like that would just do your body so much good, especially with the base you've yeah. already built. So yeah. I, I like the fact that, I mean, I understand like this is part of life, right? Sometimes I have to work with constraints with a client that this just, this class is what works best for me, Adam. And mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. so, and consistency matters the most. So I'm going to give you the exact advice, but the fact that you're open to getting to a gym and training like him at one point, mm -hmm. that, that is the next level for you. Like when you start really seeking the next, level of body transformation so that it's going to come yeah. from lifting like that but remarkable uh progress yes. so far very very good yeah very very good great 
so going back to my other question that um about nutrition so i said like i you know i have like i'm not having a hard time meeting my protein goal uh, that comes pretty naturally and easy, but I do sometimes under eat carbs and fat. So uh, my question is, like, does that matter? Are you hitting? Um, usually, I'm. Are you hitting your calorie target? Um, sometimes I come like a couple hundred calories short. Try to hit the calorie target. Uh, it, so if if it comes with extra protein, that's fine. But but try to hit the calorie target. Are, are you you're just finding it difficult to eat that much food? Yes. It's just the volume. It's oh. just like so I mean, much. This is, this, yeah. this you're, also, you're in a good position. I was just going to say, Sal, this also highlights actually why you've had this beautiful exchange of not really moving yeah. a lot on the scale, but building muscle, losing body fat. It's because what sounds like it's happening is you're kind of feeding the body, right? What it needs. Sometimes you miss a little bit on calories. That's okay. It creates a natural deficit. You burn a little bit of body fat. Other days you hit the target. You actually build a little bit of muscle. So that's what's going on. You're like, you can't, it's uh, so people understand when you zoom out 30 days and you've built yeah. muscle and lost body fat, that's what's happened is that there's periods of time when you're a little bit in a surplus because you're eating just to, you're hitting your goal. Then there's other times where you're kind of missing it because the body doesn't build muscle and burn body fat at the same time. It's one or the other. It doesn't happen at the same time. So what me, what that means when we look at zoom out 30 days is you have had periods of time when you're probably hitting your 2300, those periods of time, you're anabolic, your body builds a little bit of muscle. Other times you're struggling to hit those calories. So you're catabolic, your body burns a little bit of body fat. You're actually probably in a perfect place to kind of stay the course too. Yeah. So I know you asked about the six week thing and I, I could potentially put you in a cut for a week or two, then go back. But you you're you're kind of in that Goldilocks zone with trying to hit those calories where you're at, and just kind of naturally, when it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. What will help and speed this up is though picking up the walking. If you can increase, if you can methodically increase steps week over week for the next six weeks, this will help. Yeah, will, will help speed up the results. But the fact that you're having trouble eating that much, and you just don't, you just don't. Want, it feels like a lot of food. I mean, going in a cut would be totally totally fine. fine. Totally yeah. fine. That's a good. That's a good time okay. to go in a cut. Yeah. I would okay. stay with that prescription I gave you. The prescription yeah, I gave you, perfect, I think, is, you know? is pretty ideal. Yeah, for like something up. like 1,700 calories, 1,800 calories for two weeks. Bring it back up for a week and then go back down, and you'll see some nice fat loss. Okay. Do that in Great. conjunction um, with the walking more. Perfect. Um, so another question more on the long-term goal is, um, I think I was listening to the, the episode came out yesterday or the day before. Um, I think somebody asked about reverse dieting. So... I think Adam, you mentioned where uh, when to stop reverse diets. Like you, you. I think I, I believe you said. I don't remember the exact words. Like you um, eat so much calorie. Yeah. Let's say if I'm eating twenty three hundred calorie right now, maybe on long term for maximum gains is maybe bring up to twenty five hundred calorie, even more for my size, and then bring it back down. But, um, am I understanding that correctly? Potentially, but what you said something okay. already that's really important. Like what comes uh, even more important to me is like when a client looks back at me and they go, Adam, this is just so much food. This is a lot of yeah. food already for me. I don't want, I don't want to force feed you. Um, I want you to be somewhere comfortable and in a perfect world, we, we push you up to that point to where you're like, this is so much food just so I could bring you back down to a level that keeps you leaner right. and, and happier. And so if you're already telling me you're pushing those boundaries at 23, I would never force you to go to 25. This is where I would say, all right, let's cut for a week or two and lower calorie. And then maybe that'll kick the appetite back up and you want to go back up to 2300. So it sounds like you've done a really good job of kind of scaling up already. And 2300 calories is a lot for you. If you were telling me it's not a lot and there's days that you easily overeat or could overeat, then I would stretch that right. capacity. I would, I would push you to go higher. But if you're like, Adam, it is really hard to hit 2300 consistently. In fact, more often than not, I fall below. Well, then you're probably reaching where the, the max you want to be at. And so we want to find that ideal, which for you might be hovering around 2000 calories might be your perfect calorie intake where you don't feel like you're starving. You don't feel like you're overstuffing. You know, you're just making good choices. You're hitting your protein take around 2000 calories and you're keeping the, the physique that you want right now. We're just trying to get to that place. So we're kind of manipulating, you know, the increasing, then decreasing and all that, but you probably could just kind of hover around where you're going and continue to see good results based off of what I'm hearing from yep. you. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, just want to say thank you guys again, you know, for putting the content out there and uh, having, you know, 
um, guests like, you know, Dr. Stephanie Estima, Dr. Gabriel Lyon, those people really, really help women, um, I think, to reshape our mindset. So thank you guys for all you do. You awesome. got it. Thanks thank for you. calling in. Yeah. To see progress like that with a boot camp class. She's doing a lot of right things. And mm -hmm. she's also got good genetics. I mean, most yeah. people don't build muscle and lose fat at the same time anyway. Yeah. Not to mention a boot camp class, which is just not an ideal uh, way to work out. I mean, so I can't, I would, I would, she just, must be adjusting. Like, I couldn't imagine what, how, yeah. I mean, if she switched her training. She, yeah. no, she's doing is, uh, I mean, I, so I had this, I had like client friends of mine that were taking Orange Theory and they would kind of be over in the corner doing their own thing and everybody would be like, what are they doing? And they, yeah. and like, I would just tell them, like, you do what I tell you to do, which yeah. is don't get into this circuit bullshit, yeah. sit on the, just because everyone else is moving, you sit, you rest for a minute. Sounds like she's doing a lot of that already in the class. Helps you. She sounds like she's got a husband who's into powerlifting, probably giving her tips on pushing yeah. strength and so that. Passed on the technique. Just shows you that it can happen. I just, for the most people listening, if you're just following what the class is doing, you ain't getting those results. No. no. You, that ain't happening. That's, she is obviously doing, and she probably has a genetic piece that Sal's talking about. In addition to that, she's also doing a lot of the right things. But the next level for her really is breaking free from that and getting into like a three day a week strength, pure strength training protocol. And she'll probably see incredible results. Our next caller is Steve from England. Steve, what's up? What's up, Steve? What's happening? Hey, guys. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me on. Yep. Oh. You got it. Um, just want to say thank you. Um, I'm going to be a bit different. I'm going to say thanks to all of you, but also uh, the people behind the scenes as well, like, mm. like uh, Doug and Andrew. Um, and I believe, is it Margaret as well on yeah. your uh, your live chat? Yep. Yeah, yeah Margaret's yep. great. Yeah, Margaret's um, awesome. We got Dylan too. Say thanks yep. to Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dylan. There's thanks a lot. I really appreciate yeah. it. There's a lot of Jerry. people behind the scenes that are far more important. You're, people. A lot of people don't realize yeah. that, so I appreciate you giving yeah. them love. Yeah, no, really, there is. Um, you know, it's great that we can send a message on uh, the Facebook Messenger, and Margaret, you know, answers, um, you know, very quickly. And it's just having that free content from you guys and from the team is unbelievable. So thank you very much. You got it, man. Thank you, Steve. Steve. How can we help you? Okay, so bear me one second. I'll just get my question up. So my situation has changed, um, considering this was a few months ago, just like you hear all the time. Um. So, hi, I love your content and podcast. I'm 36-year-old male, uh, 20, uh, 251 pounds. Uh, I want to get to 220, uh, 192 centimeters, uh, six foot three. Um, back on a fitness kick, lost 70 pounds since January. Uh, currently trying to lose weight and build muscle. I'm exercising, working out, and walking more than 18,000 steps a day. I'm new to macro counting, currently using NutriCheck to count calories and macros. Uh, I put in the app that I'm trying to consume 2,000 calories, so I'll be in a deficit. But when I put my exercise in, it changes my target calories to something like 2,570, for example. If the calorie counter app is saying I can consume over 3,000 calories, does this mean that it's still a deficit if I eat 2,500 calories because my exercise offsets it? Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Let's talk about this though. Yeah. Okay. Those, those estimates are misleading. Yeah, yeah. They can be very off. The, I never want my clients to use the, what all these tools and apps tell them they should do. We, the, it's always our job to kind of figure out because the individual is so, so there's a, such a wide, a, a guy, your age, your size, everything the same as you could have a totally different metabolic rate, meaning their, their calorie. And that's, that's all the information they're getting. They get your weight, your height, all the things that you're doing, and they guesstimate what that could be. So I never want them to use that. I, right away already, I know based off of your size, um, we're way low. Like, that's way low. Yeah, well, There's, yeah, can, that's, I, can I add to it? Yeah, uh, If yes, you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, like I said, I spoke to uh, Margaret, and it is Margaret, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah Margaret. Yeah. Um, she said, yeah, 2,000 sounds really low. Mm -hmm. um, she said, I'd love to see you on a reverse diet. Mm -hmm. uh, so she sent me a few links from videos that you guys have done. Good. Um, obviously, I've heard you guys talk about it all the time, about reverse diet. Okay. So I did reverse diet. Um, I went from 2,000 uh, up to 3,000. Okay. Um, up to 3,500. Okay. Up to 4,000. And now I'm at 4,500. Ah. Um, I've actually lost more. Ah. I'm now 238 pounds. <laughs> okay. Now we're well, talking. Um, now we're talking, lost, Steve. 
And I've lost 2% body fat as well. Hell yeah. Isn't that weird? Hell yeah. So yeah, crazy. Uh, Who would have thought yeah, these right. mindful uh, guys know what they're talking hey. about? Yeah. Hey, I'm so glad you did. I'm, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to make sure we shout out Margaret. I, that's great advice. Yep. I'm glad you took it. And uh, look at that, man. How crazy is that? How long have you been at 4,500 calories? Um, so I've been at 4,500 now probably for about uh, a month. Um, so I have cut and it was amazing. Like it was almost like turning, um, a gas hob. Yeah. Um, that's the only way I can imagine it. Uh, I can describe it. Um, so when I cut, um, I went, I, I cut by about 1000 calories, um, a day and I did it for a, uh, only a week and like the, the weight fell off me and yep. I'm using, um, what do you guys call it? electric impedance? Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the scales at the gym. So you, you grab hold of it. It sends electric current through your body. I know it's not accurate. I know you guys don't like them. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, cause I'm using that regular, uh, to monitor then, you know, obviously it's given me a rough guide That's and good. I've lost 2% body fat. It's the best way to use it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, here's what I would do at this point. So many calories, you, you're probably a lot stronger. You're probably seeing great progress in the gym. I would just alternate between cutting and bulking. Yeah. Your, I mean, your calories, I mean, 4,500 is a great place to be. It's a great lot of place. food. Great place. So I would go, you know, between 3,000 to 4,500 calories. I would do a mini cut, mini bulk, mini cut, mini bulk, and continue yeah. to strength train and aim for progress in the gym. If you're progressing in the gym and you're alternating with your calories, you're going to be getting leaner while building you're muscle. You're at such a beautiful place. That's exactly the advice I well, give is bouncing. I started down. with a... Uh, I started with Maps Anabolic uh, a few months ago. I, I managed to do six weeks uh, and then I actually changed my job um, to a bin man. I'm guessing you guys would call it a trash man. Yeah. Um, so running behind a bin wagon. Um, uh, so I'm doing between 15 and 20 miles a day. So you're talking 30,000 to 40,000 steps a day. Wow. Um, at the moment. So that's why I've had to push my calories so far up. Yeah. So Matt, I figured from listening to you guys about overtraining and everything like that, I thought MAPS had anabolic would be a bit too much. Um, so I went ahead and got... Um, MAPS 15. Uh, MAPS 15. Excellent sorry, choice. yeah. Excellent choice. Um, and Prime. Um, and I've been working through MAPS 15, um, seeing some great gains. It's been brilliant. Um, but even that is quite hard because my, my day is filled like... Basically, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning to take my dog for a walk. I start work at seven. So my, about 10,000 of my steps just come from my dog walk. I've got a husky, so he needs a lot of walking. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of it comes from work. So it's, I mean, it's a lot. Do you guys still think maps like 15 would be appropriate? Yeah. yeah yes. Mm -hmm. And here's what you can do with it, Steve. So, cause what probably seems like a lot more than the actual training volume in it is the, just the commitment of training six days a week in the gym, I would assume, or work, working out six days. What you can do is uh, combine some of the days, the way it's structured. So let's say today is just a man, it's a long work day, busy, tons of steps. You're exhausted and you're feeling, you're like, man, I don't feel like lifting today. Take the day off. And then the next day, put the two workouts together. So you're still hitting, right. you're hitting all the muscle groups, you're hitting everything we have in there. Just combine some of the workouts on the days that it makes more sense. When you have a day off or when you're better yeah. rested, you can do that. That's what's great about MAPS 15 is you don't necessarily have to do it six days a week. It could be a three-day-a-week program that you you pair up days or it could be a you know four day a week where you pair up one day and then the other days are so you can you can have some flexibility with it like yeah, that. Yeah, but that's the right program for you. It is a perfect program for you. Well, you say that, but <laughs> um, so my, my, I'm going to change my job again soon, uh, and it's <laughs> it's through listening to you guys. To be honest, um, I listen to you guys at least for three hours a day uh, when I'm walking my dog in the morning and at night and during the day as well. Um, and you've had a, a big impact on me, as you can see with the reverse diet and everything like that. So thank you very much. Um, but through hearing you guys go on about longevity and everything and the impacts on your joints and running isn't good for you and everything like that. And basically at the moment I'm running behind a bin wagon, 10 to 15 miles wearing steel toe cap boots. Mm. Um, so it's not good for you. You know, it's not good for your ankles. It's not good for your knees. I'm a heavy set guy anyway. So that impacts on my joints isn't good. And all the time I'm hearing you guys in my head. Uh, talking about longevity and everything and mu muscle building and um it's actually made me change uh, my job so i'm actually going to be a postman now 
Okay. So uh, a mailman. All right. Yeah, so yeah. it's going to be a, a similar amount of steps. Cabs. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it'll be a similar amount of steps. Um, still thirty to 40,000 a day, but I won't be running. Um, and I'm hoping that if you guys say it's appropriate, on my on my days off, uh, I'll get two days off a week, and I'm hoping to go back to anabolic. That's fine. Um, yeah. Do Do you guys think that'll yeah. be okay? With yeah, that's, yeah. No, that's that great. Much? Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, that's I, think great. You, I think you're going to be fine. Uh, what's great though is you do have Math 15. So if you feel like it's too much and you're, it's you then go back to Math 15. Yep. Those two programs would be great for you to bounce. The fact you have Maps Prime also. Make sure you include some of that in there on those days the joints start talking to you or whatever. Just listen to your body. You're doing a lot of the right things, Steve. Like you're in a good place calorie wise. You're listening to your body. You're doing the right program. Um, absolutely. Try anabolic. Uh, it should be fine. If for some reason it's too much, you can scale down to two days uh, of MAPS anabolic or go back to MAPS 15. And at the moment, I'm getting seven hours sleep uh, a night. That's solid sleep. Nice. Um, so it's from 9 p.m. till um, 4 a.m. Nice. Um, do you guys think that's enough? I know you try to say try and get like eight, nine hours, but would you say that's okay with what I'm doing? It's probably okay, but you could, you know, I would see how you feel by adding another 30 minutes. And if you feel better, then you probably need a little more. Yeah. Yeah, it's just obviously understanding, like, you know, you guys have kids as well. Yeah. When you put the kids to bed, you want yeah. to spend a little bit of time with your wife, just you you two, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Um, so it's hard. Going to bed at 9 p.m. is quite early as it is, you know? It's yeah. a juggle. It's yeah. a juggle. Yeah. But, you're, you're, I mean, if you're getting stronger, you're getting leaner, you're building muscle, I mean, you're doing great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you'll be fine. You'd great. Be and can I just ask you, um, you obviously, you've got MAPS bands. Uh, how long is the workout for that, roughly? Uh, about 45, 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. 45 minutes. Yeah. 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 Do you have that program? And that's one you can continuously do too. Yeah. Do you have that? Um, no, no, I've only got them three anabolic prime and uh, 15. I'll send you bands. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. That'd be brilliant actually. Yeah. Then I could, I could use that as well. You yeah. got it, man. Yeah. That one. And then uh, map suspension is another good option for you too. Those are all, those are all really good, good options for you, but we'll see. I just you. have to get a, a door frame that's uh, strong enough for me. Yeah. This is true. This is true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, all right, Steve. I, hey, keep us posted. You're doing great, man. That's great. Thank you very much for your help. Appreciate it. All right, Take it easy. All right, see. You. So I, I, I want to. What uh, a great, what a great. Yeah, and I want to touch spin. on something because because I'll tell you something now. Uh, there are people who are same age, same body weight, also working out like crazy, doing lots of cardio, who cannot consume 4,500 calories because their body's adapted and they're not strength training properly. He reversed diet, strength training, building muscle. This is why his metabolism is as fast as it is. So what I don't want is people listen to be like, oh, well, he's eating 4,500 calories because he's doing so much walking and moving. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no. He's built his metabolism. Your metabolism can have tr tremendous flexibility in how it adapts. I mean, I've worked with people yeah. as big as him who, who, who gain body weight it's over- Always trying to be efficient. That's it. And that's, I mean, that's the point of it. So yeah, for him to do that intentionally, it really uh -huh. helps to kind of stoke that metabolism. Such an awesome testimony to hear- you know where he was at. So grab, so great he, the way he started it because he didn't feel like it was going to go there. Like yeah. he left to hang. I was like, oh shit, bro, you were like, way bro. too low. Right. And then to hear him go from two thousand to forty five hundred calories, get leaner, and then yeah, get leaner yeah. in the process. Then put himself on a little bit of a cut to three thousand calories, which is now a cut for him, and his body just his body weight just yeah. drop. Like that's awesome. perfect. This is exactly what we try and communicate, and. Yes, he's a big, you know, six foot three, 250 pound guy, but it's all relative. Like, so the, the girl who's listening to this right now, who only, you know, weighs 150 or 160 pounds, uh, absolutely. It's not, you're not, you don't need to get same to same principles. Same yeah. principles apply. It's just, you don't need to get all the way to 4,500, but you getting to 2,800 calories, yep. which probably sounds crazy to you, is where you want to get. And then you come back down to say 22 or 2,000, and you're just weight coming off. It's Shout amazing. out to Margaret. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out.